Buenas. Hello. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Here we are. What happened to you? What happened to you? The barbers are still closed in Scotland. Finally, I can see, I can see the barbers opening soon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I thought about doing something special for our last party, Rafa. Yeah, but you never tell me. But I should have dig out my my weeks or from my. <laughs> For my acting days, I don't know. <laughs> well, how are you? How was that week? I'm good. I'm, I'm, it's a mixture of feelings. Uh, it's been a long process. So we're all in the team somehow wishing to, you know, finish and have a break. And at the same time, it's a very special one, obviously, because of the level of the guests we have, because it's the end of a beautiful 13-week journey. So it's the mixture. Very excited. So it can really go. It can it can go really wrong today. It can be. It can go really wrong today. Well, let's hope it's not. And um, yes, we have here our friends starting to connect. Fantastic. And um, as usual, I'm here doing a hundred things at the same time, which is uh, the best formula to really not getting it right. Uh, <laughs> not do any in the right way. <laughs> So, yes, there, a, a, a crazy week of watching films, etc. Uh, I think we have, we have both with Davide uh, watch uh, the, the whole catalog in Huesca's uh, short film festival that was online. Some gems, some beautiful short films, some polemic ones, at least internally. Oh my hair. <laughs> uh, let's not say names, but there's, there's a particular one from. From Mexico, which is dividing the lines of cinematic. It's that, it's that um, time of the year that, no, that the programming team watch intensively a lot of short films and we, we decide what we're going to show next year. And, and it's been an intense week in that front. We've watched a lot of short films. Yes, yes, yes. Those were the days when we could watch the, the films all together in my bedroom with a projector <laughs> and then argue in the flesh. Yeah, Chinese, that, Chinese food and all that stuff. But here I we are. Arguing through WhatsApp is not quite the same. Nah, nah. Insulting you in WhatsApp is not the same. Your taste is disgusting, Rafa. It's not the same that, you know, face to face. First, well, he's told me it's a lot harder than that. And secondly, that's what happens often. It's true. It happens rarely. We, we wash our clothes indoors. Uh, here we are, Rafa. Uh, last vermouth, last supper, last dinner. Last supper, well, no, no, it's not. It's, it, it's, it's just a break. I mean, we, Cinematic traditionally has done the last push in June. We are always, uh, every month we are on. And then July and August are months to to, to, to give our, my sons, for example, the chance to have an a early memory of their father, no? Why? And, well, today's Father's Day. <laughs> today's Father's Day. I, I, uh, I, 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 happy so. Father's Day, Rafa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and yes, yes, yes. We we normally close August. You remember we used to open, but it was too difficult to to get an event to, to kind of uh, market it or, or, or communicate to people when there's such an avalanche of events in Edinburgh. 
And it was a good time to just catch up with programming, catch up with, with family and friends, go on holidays, things like that. So this year is not going to be different. The, the first date we have for uh, In the Flesh, using our friends Alan Cody's uh, wording, uh, is the 27th of August, where if everything goes as it seems to be going, uh, we'll have the chance to, to have some sort of event with obviously all measures in place and that. And we'll be sure the... I get nervous when you when you say, you know, I get nervous, hopefully. Oh, the, 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 I, I, I've seen, did you see the post from El, El Doré in Madrid from the film, Spanish Filmotech where they, they put the illusions from Jonas Prueba and the team were there and then they have a shot of the, of the audience and they have this partition. So, so these two lines where nobody can see it, one yes, two no. And still, they, they, they sold out the, the, the few tickets they could sell. And it's, it's a way to come back. It's not the idea, but it's, it's the way we can do it. It's, it's, a, it's a funny one because uh, having your, my, my perspective, you have one eye in Spain and one eye here. And obviously, Spain is a few weeks ahead in terms of reopening cinemas and. and, yeah. and, and and yeah, finishing the, the lockdown. We got the news at the uh, picture house and and what's the other one, the big one, uh, yeah, the Omnis and all this. They reopen on the 12th of July. That's, that's just uh, over a couple of weeks uh, uh, away. And they obviously they will have, they've, they've been advertising uh, all sorts of uh, security safety measures that they will observe, which is obviously needed for this kind of situation. But they, they will open. They will open the whole, all the screens, all the, the cinemas across the UK. Uh, the commercial, the more commercial ones will open on the 12th. The independent ones have different, obviously, re financial realities, staff realities to meet. But we are looking forward to hear news from the likes of Film House, GFTs, the CCAs, see how they can manage to, to get that together and come back. And um, with that said, <laughs> <laughs> Is when we started, Rafa, back to back to the, you know the quarantena. When we started, did you thought this was gonna last thirteen weeks and we were gonna survive? Well, so we were gonna fall somewhere. In the of the Lord of eighteen sixty what? What was? That? I don't remember. There was a John Haney fellow when we started. It's been a long run, eh? It's been a long run. It, it felt it was gonna be a lot easier. We, we said it was going to be, you know, a selection of 90. We kind of uh, uh, ended up showing 92 films, but it's been uh, thrilling uh, for us, you know, to just to think on a 90, on a 13 week long program and, you know, a collection that is at the same time, it, it feels like there's a lot, you know, 90 short films. And still we feel each of them is a small, uh, great film that should be reclaimed, rewatched, we celebrated, and it's, it's, we're so happy, I guess, uh, just just to be able to finish, to, to, to offer these 92 films, to share them with people, to commend them. So, yes, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing as well. It's like a, a reflection on the state of the short film industry. You know? we, we, we have shown 92 films, and by no means that is a comprehensive uh, selection of what has happened along the last Thank you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, there's clear, there's so many films we haven't been able to show. Uh, you know, one that it really hurts me not, not having shown, uh, but for different reasons, because uh, it, it is it's still uh, doing the circuits, it's always are, uh, and be, be behind a payment but, uh, wall, which is fair enough, because they are great pieces of art and they deserve to be valued as such. And, and over the, basically the, the owners of the film have other plans for them. So it hasn't been easy to, 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 to do these collections and choose uh, so many. And that is a reflection on the quality of the output and the, the, the quantity, you know, of quality and the quantity of the output in the short film industry. So, hey. This is me playing a little bit with the camera. No, you're playing with your head. Ah, right. <laughs> Here we go. Just making sure I got battery uh, until Monty and, and Bigalondo come in. Yes, 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 yes. Look, I have this now. There you go, technology. Cutting edge technology. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's the last Bermud, and I couldn't imagine uh, better guests no? to, to finish right on a high. 
uh, than than these two that are so close to to you know a basic short film maker to understand Spanish short film history in, in the 2000s like Monty and you know uh, a wild pop icon filmmaker like Nacho Vigalondo. So look forward to that. But before that, uh, yeah. we like to we like to to comment and to talk a little bit about the last program. No? We receive again a lot of uh, messages, uh, private messages and personal messages and emails uh, with people happy with the selection. Uh, so let's run through it if you, yes, if you well, like the idea. Before that, this, uh, uh, we, uh, we think, I mean, this is our uh, quarantena cinematic, which is a consequence of the, which is the coronavirus uh, situation. And it's also, it was going to be a celebration in the flesh of our 10 years as Cinematic. Cinematic is a platform that has been running for over 10 years now. And it was set to promote Ibero-American independent cinema in Scotland. We have managed to get, take it beyond Scotland, and it's, that's great. Uh, we have a regular event in Edinburgh, a regular event in Glasgow. And we are looking forward to seeing you all in the flesh. Remember that this broadcast is live. A, we are showing it through our Facebook's, uh, Facebook pages. We are showing it in YouTube. We are showing it in our website. And in our website, you have a repository of the films we have shown. Most of them, some of them, as I said, they were the directors very generously let us show it for a week. But most of them will still be there. Uh, these Bermuds will be there. The laugh and the beers we have with uh, some of the directors will still be there. And we invite you to to go and check them both in our YouTube channel and in our website, cinematic.com. Very well said, Rafa. He, 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 you know, um, he was uh, very well branded, both cinematic. <laughs> well, well, well. And said that, Fepo, Fepo, Cesar Díaz Meléndez. Well, we it, was, to... it, was, it was hard when choosing it because there were some directors like Cesar Díaz Meléndez that couldn't be out of, of this selection, no? or Josie Malis. Um, that it was like they have to be in the last program because uh, yeah, uh, Cesar Díaz Meléndez is you know basic animator in Spain. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's an amazing work. Again, uh, it went through through the works. I, I, I used to discuss with you and maybe with some other people the, the Spanish Civil War becoming a, a genre in its own right. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not. A, so it used to be included in social cinema or in war cinema. But now it's kind of a Spanish Civil War, the, the, and the, the characters are there, no? the, the, the Civil War couple, uh, and the, 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 obviously the, 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 the victims, or those who pay the, the bills, some of the victims, not all of them. And, and, and this one is not a, a, a difference. It's a very short, short film, so it's for the redundancy, and it, it calls on characters that are known in that genre. And the other films that we all know about the Spanish Civil War, have his characters and start talking to these ones. So the girl doesn't need too much. The victim there doesn't need to, we don't see it properly. We don't know where it's coming from. We don't know how he got shot actually or where he's bleeding. Well, we know where he's bleeding and I'm gonna spoil it. And the, the, the title of the short film should give a clue on that. But it, it and, and then the sinister to, to head it, no, a Bicephalus figure that comes, um, it's, it's amazing that this is happening, and uh, I, I wish it was taken as serious as it should be taken, and the, 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 the historic uh, realities were respected and all that. But uh, yeah, it's a great animation, again, for a very small team, and um, quite an amazing one. What do you think? Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, when, when you use sand animation, often a lot of directors use it to recreate dreams or to evocate, you know, or to, or to think on dreams. And it has that dreamy uh, effect all the way through, no? But it's what you were saying. It, it, it makes you feel so much, so intensively in, you know, five, six minutes. Uh, that is, you have to be a master to be able to reach, you know, that in, in a spectator. Uh, with so very few elements, sand animation, a vague aspect of humans, a forest, Yes, a historic period that is the Spanish Civil War, but uh, it can be applied to any kind of war or conflict, no? And and just you know, brothers exterminating brothers uh, uh, and the worst of humanity, really. It's so 
so painful. Like watching the short film, that moment that, you know, the last breath, the silence is so painful. Uh, and yet, uh, you know, some people might think, why you, you know, make us feel so uncomfortable? I think there is a point on getting back to this, in particularly in the days and where, you know, the political debate in Spain is taken to, you know, be very polarized. It, it, there is value in, in getting back to this film, to Paseo that we showed two weeks ago, in a different way to Expediente with Eno. It's, it's, you know, either through comedy, through dark adult animation, like in this case, uh, there is value and we reclaim, you know, films that get, films like this, that get really to the depth of maybe in five minutes of, of what was the Spanish Civil War, of the grief of, you know, uh, freedom need, free grief. In seconds. The, 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 also, the, the, this as a as a work of animation is amazing. There are many things: the transparency of the eyes, the the the, the, well, the, the feelings coming out of the the, the, the faces. I, I did say on purpose this bicephalous beast because the, the author Fesar plays with that. Plays with is 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 a great piece of art. And the subject and the story is telling, obviously, is a very strong one and obviously still has all these kind of very passionate uh, arguments and uh, uh, but it's a civil war. Yeah, <laughs> when, 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 nice when we, when it's, it's funny because... When, it's a great okay, animation, it's a great piece of art, it's a great piece of drawing, uh, animated drawing. I, I, I love it. I, totally, I, I, and when, when we were uh, passing through the Valle del Cauca in Colombia and stopping in some small villages, you will stop, show films, and then they will say, oh, you're from Spain. Oh, we love some uh, animators from Spain. And the first one happened twice, that they will say is Cesar Díaz Meléndez, uh, Cesar Linga, no? also known uh, amongst friends in the, in the animation circuit as Cesar Linga. And it's incredible to have, uh, you know, people like, so many, Isibene, Isabel Herguera, Alberto Vázquez winning yesterday a grand jury prize in an yeah, 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 Spanish yeah, yeah. short film. Chris Embe, we love you from here. We love you from here. You know, great news. Cesar, Chris, that we were saying, so many others. Ana Solanas, Mark Riva, Coque Riobo, so Alexandra, many incredibly talented Alexandra, animators. Alexandra Castellanos, we had last week. I was talking particularly about Spanish animation, but, but definitely, you know, you can extend it. But Cesar Linga and the last show we, we had this year, you know, before when it was all madness and we had to do social distancing uh, in the last, in that last session that we were doubtful if we should do it or not. Uh, we were showing Latin American animation and in, we, we shown uh, Muedra, you know, the last short film by, by Cesar and everyone loved it. Uh, everyone loved it because he moves between working with top directors, Charlie Kaufman, Wes Anderson, Tim Burton, uh, and then doing these small little films, uh, uh, you know, from his studio in Madrid. So he's, he's, he's very, very talented one to watch, one to keep in mind and watch all his work, because most of it is open online, so you can enjoy it. Cesar yeah. Linga, a great master. David Pantaleón, another... <laughs> 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 a completely other side of the coin. Uh, there's no much animation there, but it could be. The surrealism brought to the social realism and all works together with some mm -hmm. masks. The mask is as a strong symbol in cinema, isn't it? It's, a, it's an amazing one. The, 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 the trickster uses to change these guys, to trick people. Uh, and exactly. It's such a strong message, you know, because you don't know who you're talking to, who is behind it. I actually went through the credits of the short film to see who is who, you know, and, and discovered that they, they, well, I don't want to say any names, but very well female uh, uh, political uh, politicians in Spain at, at, that, at that time are represented by men and vice versa. So in some <laughs> main politicians, are, 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 it's females wearing the mask. So it, and they are having a pyjama party. <laughs> Let's not give any spoilers. <laughs> There is no coincidence we're putting these films together. Uh, there is some haste with political class or with where the political debate is taking. So nothing is a coincidence. In the last program, we were kind of, you know, reflecting on some of those things through absurd comedy, like this case, but uh, through some others. And, 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 and Panta was here uh, a few weeks uh, ago. We were lucky to have him in the, in the Vermouth. It's not a secret. If you haven't seen his films, 
likewise, most of them are open, open online and it's, you know, little treasures, films, small films made with his friends in, in, in Gran Canaria, no? Uh, and, and with incredible talent, with a mixture of absurd, uh, critical politic, but religious politic, really analyzing Spanish society through absurd humor, uh, making a, making a point. Uh, there's, there's, Little more when 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 you do a setup, you know when you stage a bunch of actors with masks, uh, uh, you know from Esperanza Aguirre, Angela Merkel, George Bush, uh, Mariano Rajoy. Uh, is it, you know it's it's easy for us to love it. Yes, yes, yes. Changing a bit the the kind of distortion of reality, reality. You no, know, one of these fiction films that could be a documentary or is it a documentary that looks like fiction? El gran Zambini, ¿no? Igor Legarreta and Emilio Pérez. Mm -hmm. I really, this one really touched me. And I remember here, uh, listening, hearing about, he, about it. But I, I don't think, I, well, I, I would remember. I don't, I, I never watched it before. And it really touched me. I mean, it's, it's amazing that it's today is Father's Day, but it's, it, this, this really touches in one of the shadows we all <clears throat> carry with us, ¿no? The, the, the fear to don't be accepted or the fear that people won't like us. And that fear obviously is magnified to the 11th exponent when it comes to your own kids, the fear that your kids won't like you. <laughs> that, that is a big one. And how he decided to give his son the, the best he has, to be a grand Zambini. I love this film, absolutely amazing. It remind, remind me of, reminds me of Luis and I, you remember, and some other circus figures, no? the circus again, another huge uh, symbolism in, in cinema, in literature, in everything, and, and, and how beautiful it is, how decadent you make it look, how strong that, that character, that, that main character is. I love this film. I, I, I'm surprised I haven't watched it before, and thank you for bringing it, Alberto. <laughs> it's a, it, it is a classic. Uh, it goes in the line of maybe ephemeral last week that kind of films you cannot resist is just so sentimental so emotionally powerful uh you know it's like a little gem and then you have that texture of the 35 millimeter of of the celluloid the element of the circus as you were saying it's it's easy to touch to touch our hearts when you play with the element of circus with clowns this is something we we reclaim where you know uh, we or in recent times, no, uh, payaso has like negative, or, or to be a clown has like negative uh, aspect when you call a clown to someone, and we're totally the opposite. We reclaim, you know, that they should be central in any society. Nosotros somos unos payasos. <laughs> we're, we're, we're nothing that payasos, and with the excuse of films, uh, we have our own little circus. So any <laughs> film that, that, that touches on that, you know, is very much akin. Um, to, our, to our taste. I choose to have a flying circus. I think that's the best circus of all. <laughs> exactly. No. Um, what can you say exactly of the rela the relationship? The you know the ending so so emotionally powerful. Yeah. What a reward. Yeah. And well, yes, touching on comedy and clowns and that. This this, this was the next the next film. No, the Expediente WT Water Clothes. Expediente uh, Butter. <laughs> Expediente Butter. <laughs> yeah, yes, because in, in Spanish, the water closed, the clothes was lost, the water obviously is butter. And that's how they spell it, with a B. And well, Arturo Ruiz Serrano, this touches on a, again, it's not civil war, but it could be the last, the last, you know what I mean, uh, sparks of, of civil war, no? a, a, a coup. That was in Spain in 1982, the 23rd of February, 1982. I remember I was a kid, but I was already uh, alive and, uh, and well, hanging around. And, and, and I, I, I don't know I don't <laughs> if the treatment that they give it to in, in this film is, is, a, is, is the most likely, but it, it's always good to laugh about serious things. You know, it kind of clears the air and make it feel a, a lot more manageable, a lot more deal, something you can deal. And the, the, the thought of, of, of Tejero, no? uh, Silva uh, General, discussing the, the speech he's going to give in the parliament after taking it over, 
in the quarter close with a couple of friends, with a couple of colleagues. Or, or, <laughs> it's just hilarious. It is, uh, I mean, the failed coup d'etat, the 23F, no? Uh, if Americans have the Watergate or the uh, uh, JFK, uh, we, this is, you know, the episode of our modern history, more full of uh, conspira con con conspiranoids no? and conspiracy theories. Uh, you know, there's a lot of literature uh, from Cercas and Anatomy of an Instant to, you know, parodies and mockumentaries and fake documentaries like the thing that Jordi Evole did with Salvados, Operación Palace, about five years ago. But earlier than that, Arturo Ruiz Serrano was doing, you know, this theatrical comedy, maybe uh, fictionalized, maybe <laughs> very real. It's, it's well known that, uh, you know, the Congress that day was, was, was a circus in a way. Uh, and, you know, no, it, it, it was... It, it, it was a it, it was a strangely coordinated coup d'état, and very strange things happen, and you know there was no a clear direction. So it's a fiction, but we like to think that maybe you know something closer was, you know, that happened. There, there was a, a thing that used to be said in Spain in those days. It was the noise of swords, ruido de sables, and that was a term to refer to the the, the, the army being unhappy. With, with, the, with what was going on. And obviously, uh, 82 is not so far away from 75, when Franco dies, when the regime finishes after 40 years. So there were still uh, a strong, I mean, the, the, the far right had a, a presence with via, via Fuerza Nueva in the parliament. And it, there was a, still a, a, a desire by many people to come back to the old days, to another army uh, dictatorship. And obviously, this was a, a key point as well. From that point onwards, it was clear that there was no way back. And, and there was still Adolfo Suárez, uh, uh, the first prime minister of this democracy. And it was a great times. I mean, it, it's funny we are showing this film when the, 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 the far right in Spain is being celebrating the memory of the another general, but this from the army, you know, from the Civil War, in Estrellas, which was killed by the, in a terrorist fight. Um, it, it, it was quite a, a, a well-known far right, <laughs> very loud supporter, uh, and, and we are showing this one, <laughs> which is obviously some some of those supporters of that, of that point of view won't find it funny on the slightest. But it's a great comedy. So it, it has it has great moments of comedy of them just talking in, in, in the in, in the bathroom and. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's worth to watch and it's worth to, 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 to don't, lead, don't let any stone unturned. Yeah, uh, like with Paseo, last week, no, uh, Arturo Ruiz Serrano takes a modern episode of Spanish history and tries to show a, a human story, maybe real, maybe fiction, uh, of you know, what, was happening, what was happening in a, in a Paseo, what was happening in, in the 23F. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm going to tell uh, Monty Five, to give us five minutes, so we have time to, to talk about the last film. No, but I think we, already, we both love. Don't worry, he's already in, and Fiona is already in, and I already told him. So, yes, cool. this is kind of DIY broadcast, and we don't want to pretend otherwise. But I must say that we are very pleased how it's coming out. <laughs> we are managing here. There's no, there's nobody else. I mean, the, the, we have, obviously, Laia, Anna F, Anna P, and Davide supporting us behind the curtains and with the communication, sharing and talking. And, but um, uh, this, that's it. I mean, Alberto is in his flat. I am in mine. <laughs> and we, we, could, we could be... Now, following what Nicola Strajon said, Alberto, we could link our two households. So I, then I can go to your place and you can, you can come to mine. And we could have done this last broadcast together. Here, sitting in my office, or sitting in yours, I don't know. The future of our uh, cinematic vermouths uh, is just starting. Uh, Elena, El Elena Asins, Genesis. Yeah, so yeah. far, so far, the most voted film this week. Well, by all rights, I mean, the, it, it, it probably is the, the one that falls out of any kind of genre, style, or theme you want to give to this uh, program. It's a it's an amazing documentary. I don't know much about Álvaro Jiménez Sarmiento. I'm sorry. Uh, 
but I, I, I actually didn't know much about Elena since until recently. I think that most people didn't know about her until she started getting awards internationally. And what an amazing work. I, I, the only thing I will criticize of this documentary is that uh, why doesn't have another five minutes on it just showing her work? I mean, we see plenty of it and it's amazing. I want to see more and more and more. And I don't want to go to YouTube or go to uh, Google, uh, which I advise you to do. Go to Google, put Elena Sins and see all her work. The documentary is amazing. The way he let her talk about very painful things, about her life, about her, her relationships with or her, her, her difficulties to, to have relationships even with, with, with members of her family. Uh, she talks about her daughter and her husband and, uh, and work comes first by far. Uh, it, 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 and how it, that comes out in a way you can understand it, you can assimilate and almost relate to her in a way. Well, it's, it's devotion and absolute dedication, no? It's, it's a sort of like Neil Young with his music. It's just people that are devoted to their to their to their work and a figure complex, immense, uh, challenging like Elena Sims needed a documentary. Uh, but he needed the right documentary, uh, and it, I think Alberto uh, Alvaro does very right that you know, you know, the mixture of interview testimony, uh, her work, uh, archive footage from interviews, and you know, total you know, oniric fugas, you no know, uh, uh, rifts in the film uh, with the sound, with the image that do a, a, a well favor, I think, to to, to the portrait of this. Artist, no. The, the artist is when you have a character like that, you already feel, you know, like uh, uh, like it's magnetic, and you want to see more. But also the the form and the way that uh, Alvaro films uh, uh, Elena scenes and you know and and shows yeah. this this small portrait is it's fantastic. Yes, as I said, I, I don't know much about this director. And uh, checking what is online about him. I can see there's a lot of uh, TV work, but there's a lot of, uh, <clears throat> there are a few other uh, short documentaries on different uh, important people, ¿no? uh, Juan Cuenca, Jose Ricardo Morales. Muñoz, Muñoz Molina, sí. Yes, so it's, it's somebody that maybe has gone uh, under the radar and we, we need to look back into it and, and see what else can we bring from him. The, 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 for me, the strongest point on this, um, on this film is the paradox between uh, every creative person will complain about not having enough time, but obviously no one really wants to end up being so alone as as, as she does. It's, it's, I mean, it's not the only person. I mean, there's many famous thinkers and creative people in the, in the history that end up living away. I mean, uh, Freud ended up living in a cottage in the Alps as far away from humanity as possible, and he knew about the human being. So it makes you think. But in another hand, it's something like, thanks to that, thanks to that sacrifice. I don't know if she sees it as a personal sacrifice or not. But thanks to that sacrifice, uh, she managed to get this, this output, this work. Out. It's, uh, thankfully, Maybe. yeah, the, the Reina Sofia Museum did the retrospective about you know, 10 years ago or six, seven years ago. And, and yeah, it was time to reclaim, you know, the work of such a, complex and challenging artists, but a pioneer in studying, you know, the links between arts and, and, and mathematics and technology yes. uh, in, in these days. So, Pretty, we are running out of time, but also I think a very interesting point here is how, how her work is shown in the documentary in nature. There's, there's very little, that is, well, there's, there's some prints and there's some stuff, so, but the, the stronger one, uh, the one that spent more time on it, uh, is shown in the middle of this, this forest isolated away from, from 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 people and some of them include the, the audio element of the piece is important and there's it, it, a very strong message you no know, of an audio being played on a remote isolated place no? it's a I, I, I love it I really think it's it probably I agree with those who are voting for this short film together with the corredor and <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't see Monty's face in the, in the waiting room. Uh, it's, it's, it's the strongest work we, we have this, this, this week. 
There's one more before I run to get a beer and we welcome our guests, eh, Alberto. Bendito Machine 6. Yes. Jose Malis. Amazing, amazing, funny, thought-provoking. Monolito. 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 The Monolito didn't come from this film. I don't remember the name of that film. What was it? This, this Galician short film, Manolito. Yeah, you know, but I remember watching this film in Clement Ferrand with you and, and being absolutely amazed by, you know, the end of the saga. Because we were coming from the over, from the, from the, uh, from a film that we had watched. I don't remember that. Do you remember this? It was a, a butcher man. It, it was called Manuel. And this guy called him and did a message in the machine said, Manolito, Manolito. <laughs> and we were laughing about that. And then we, we, we kind of came out of this film saying, Monolito. <laughs> Monolito. <laughs> Doesn't allow us to back. What, what can we say? It's, 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 it, uh, we know the, the work of Jesse Malis. It's a great, it, it's, it's very good stuff. He uses this kind of line and, and beautiful production that belongs always to Hollywood and to, to other bigger movies, to, to, but to go to darker areas of, 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 uh, of genre, of theme. And it, it, it comes out so, so well. The, the previous one, you remember, was this kind of machine. I had this loop where people lost their life, and it was a, such a symbolic thing. And here plays with the Space Odyssey 2001, Stanley Kubrick, and, and many others that link that origin of the human being with what we, we have become you know, these days. And is to find the, the evolution, whether it's forward or backward, so oh, we have a move Particularly you know, on how we use using the, the relationship between human and technology. We were talking about Elena Sims and the use of maths and internet, and, and this film, you know, puts in your face, in the way that Alberto Vázquez does with his films as well, it's a message of just putting a mirror and letting humanity see in the mirror of what we're doing, how we're using technology, are we making the best use of technology, or are we just a bunch of monkeys playing with our phones, you know, all the time? A bit of fun, a bit of <laughs> it, 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 it is uncomfortable, but it's a mirror to tell you, you know, how, how stupid we, we might be or we might be using technology. I had this argument the other day with somebody who is a bit traditional, or very traditional, and, and a bit far right, sorry. And the thing like that, and, and, and I, we couldn't agree on anything. And, and, and at the end, I told him, he said, This monkey doesn't want to go back to the tree. <laughs> and he couldn't answer that. <laughs> So, yeah. I think this film is fantastic. Listen, I'm going to run while you say something about Jose Luis Montesinos, get a beer, Monty, Fiona, with you in 30 seconds. Wait. Here we go. Well, I'll, I'll do a wee intro while, while Rafa is away. Monty is a, a, a key, a relevant figure. We were reclaiming the work of the Alendas, we were reclaiming the work of Pedro Collantes, Esteban Crespo, Tony Bestart, a generation of directors that it's impossible to understand Spanish short films uh, without them. And Monty uh, belongs to that heaven of, of, of that group of basic uh, filmmakers to understand the 2000s in Spain. Uh, born in Tarragona. I don't know, Rafa, if you were planning to do the intro or am I anticipating? I, that doesn't matter. Uh, we, we are well known for stepping on one each other's shoes, and <laughs> this is not going to be the last time. Tarragona, born, uh, Monty, uh, engineer, director, screenwriter. He has directed several short films. We know him for the extensive and the quality of his short film career. Final, uh, the, uh, was best short film in San Sebastian Film Festival. Matagatos, best short film in Fant Bilbao. La Historia de Siempre, one of our favorites, with more than 130 awards. Uh, and then El Corredor, the most uh, recent one, that received the Goya Award. He was nominated to the European Film Awards. It was an absolute uh, success uh, across the globe. And, and, and it's the reason why we, why we enter in his filmography. He was part of our first Catalan Film Festival. Uh, so it's part of a very emotional night when we were starting a new era in Cinematic. He did uh, his first feature uh, premiered in Sitges last year, uh, Cuerdas, Ropes, and we're thrilled to, to welcome Monty uh, to this last Bermud. Hi, Hi, friends. How are you? Hola, Monty. Hola, Hola. ¿qué tal? Hi, Hola, Fiona. Fiona. Hi, Rafael. Hola. 
Hola, Hola. I, I, just have, I just have one question. I don't know if it is Alberto or Nacho Vigalondo. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I'm not sure either. And this, this, here no lies. The, the, this was meant to be only for the first part, Monty. I, I'll ah, proceed okay. to show you. I knew, my, okay. I knew it was not taken off. <laughs> I, I knew it. Well, you know, guys, uh, we have Fiona Bale, which I don't know who did you upset to end up working with Cinematic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No. I, I count myself as lucky. <risa> intentaré, intentaré no darte mucha faena, Fiona. Gracias. <risa> Fiona, eh, normally can eh, obviously do life interpretation. Eh, over five minutes you can talk and she can repeat it. But being online and that, maybe let's not put that to the test. If we can do answers one minute eh, at a time and then continue, and she will translate into English, and if you don't understand what we are saying, because after 25 years in Scotland, I still speak like with a heavy Vallecan accent, <laughs> but just, she will translate into Spanish. <laughs> okay. Uh, how are you, Monty? Where, where are you? I am now in, in my house. Uh, I am in San Cugat del Valles, uh, where I live uh, since uh, three years uh, right now. And, and uh, we are not confined, uh, so so we, we, we can stay at uh, the street and and at the bars. Uh, in fact, I I, I I just coming from a from from a terraza, no, and, and to have vermouth with the family and, 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 and a lot of friends. So, os, os compadezco. <laughs> <laughs> El pub no está abierto aún. The, the pubs exactly. are shut. <laughs> but 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 we are we are happy because uh, we are looking uh, we are just uh, watching the, the the light at the end of the of the tunnel you know so so is 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 amazing for for the Spanish <laughs> global I think but uh, with 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 a, a lot of uh, incertitude uh, with the with the future. Uh, in relation with the industry, because uh, I think that that um, right now come um, several um, uh, difficult times for the for the cinema uh, in in all in all the ways uh, in short film and, and, and in the future. So we are we are preparing and now a new projects and, and and with this dot uh, in the air and. But but well, we, we are survivors. Uh, like uh, as as I'm in my cinema, I I, I just uh, talking uh, always uh, of survivors. So <laughs> we are. I was going. I, I was going to say, Monty. Buen territorio, buen territorio de supervivientes. Sí, I was going to say that obviously when you make El Corredor, uh, is the post-crisis uh, atmosphere. Uh, uh, now you know it is a story of a of a survivor in a way. With, in any crisis, there is a bunch of people that hold on and survive, and there are many that are left behind. Uh, probably what we are coming, you know, I don't know if we're going to need more films like The Runner uh, or more characters like, uh, like the character in the, in the Runner, but it looks like after this quarantine, no, more stories like that will be, will be needed. More Seguro. stories about survivors. For sure, for sure. I think that in, in the future, uh, there will be a, a lot of stories about about the the, the, the confinamiento and, and about the people in their houses uh, and and independent movies and, and platform movies uh, a lot of movies uh, basadas en el confinamiento voy a seguir en, en español porque yo creo que va a fluir un poco más Fiona vale sí. <laughs> eh, de hecho yo la mayoría de gente que tengo alrededor siempre tiene una historia acerca del confinamiento y, y la tiene en mente o la está escribiendo o la está llevando a productoras eh, hay un montón. Yo he intentado, nosotros hemos intentado alejarnos un poco eh, de, de este tipo de historias en, en un futuro, porque preveemos que va a haber bastantes. De todas maneras, en, en mi caso, hacer, hacer cortometrajes o historias sobre crisis eh, es un poco circunstancial. A mí lo que me interesa es 
eh, más que la temporada de la crisis, es el tipo de personaje que eso genera. ¿no? Entonces, eh, en mi caso siempre pues, me, ha, me ha obsesionado mucho el mundo de los supervivientes. Y a partir de ahí pues, hemos, hemos tratado eh, muchas historias, no solo en el corredor, ¿no? sino ya desde el principio, el final, donde hablábamos de un tipo que escribía cartas de suicidio a gente que no sé, que no, que a la cual no le salían, básicamente, ¿no? ya sea porque no sabía escribir o ya sea porque quería contar con alguien con más talento. ¿no? Fiona. <risa> Um, yeah, I know a lot of people who are working on stories um, relating to the quarantine. So they're sort of yeah working on characters or the um, yeah uh, working on that theme. Uh, personally, I, I'm going to try and move away from that because I think there will be quite a, a, a glut of these sorts of films. Um, on my short films, I I do look at crises uh, in people's lives, but it's more circumstantial. What interests is what interests me more is the actual people and um, survivors, especially. Um, for example, uh, in the runner, that's that's what I I deal with, and there have been other other um, situations in my work where I've dealt with this theme of how people overcome crises, you know, including even suicide. Yes, well, uh, we, let's hope he doesn't get to, to that. Uh, El Final was a very strong film on the idea, on the on that subject. The, somebody feeling that people will need a suicide later and, it, and this needs to be good enough, no? <laughs> as, 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 as is the, 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 the signature. The one who signed it will care of the reaction of that letter after he's gone. No? But then the... the, the <clears throat> The, 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 this theme of losing gets more sophisticated. When you get to La Historia de Siempre, it, it's amazing. I mean, I, it got me completely. Uh, you, you, you got me. I, I was believing on this man having a conversation with his wife. And, and I would have given him, I don't know, one, two euros or five euros in the, if I had been in that bus. As, as I, the performance is amazing. And it, that, that twist at the end, you, you need somebody like, Like um, Miguel Angel Jenner to, to do it, he's a great actor, but he, 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 you have a relationship with him. It is going through your works and it's, it's now as well in Cuerda. It, it, is the actor making the, the script, or you, you made the script because you have you, you count on this actor to do it? How, how that works? No, eh, Miguel Ángel is, is a great partner, eh, Sainz, de, de Historia de Siempre, ¿no? eh, pero no, normalmente en todos los trabajos yo sí que siempre me he ocupado del guión y luego ya sí que ha, ha entrado Miguel Ángel a poner pues, eh, su gran grano de arena, porque, porque la historia de siempre o el corredor pues no, no, no serían absolutamente nada ¿no? sin, sin, sin su aportación. Y, y lo que sí que hemos respetado es bastante el, el guión, tanto en la historia de siempre como en el corredor. Eh, lo, lo trabajamos con, con Jack Esblesa, que es, que es el co-guionista con el que normalmente yo siempre trabajo, y, y sí que con ellos ensayábamos mucho, entonces pulíamos en algún aspecto algunos diálogos, pero Miguel Ángel es una bestia del papel. O sea, pensemos que es que él, él ha sido, es director de doblaje, eh, entonces sabe exprimir eh, los diálogos que tú tienes en el papel de una manera brutal. Eh, sí que te, a veces sugería alguna, algún cambio de alguna palabra y tal, pero sí que respetábamos mucho y sobre todo la estructura de, de, de la historia. Eh, yo necesitaba una voz muy potente para hacer la historia de siempre y, y bueno, acudimos un poco a, a, a actores de, de doblaje. ¿no? Eh, creo que Miguel Ángel fue la segunda opción. La primera opción, no diremos nombres, no, no, no salió. Yo creo que se, se arrepentirá porque Miguel Ángel Jenner, al cogerlo, pues, pues para él significó muchísimo. El, para él, yo creo que su vida eh, en la ficción trascendió, ¿no? Después de la historia de siempre participó en muchas series, en, en otras películas. Sí. Y, 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 no, y, bueno, dejo a Fiona que, que traduzca un poco, uh -huh. porque es que no. Um, yes, um, in terms of uh, Miguel Ángel, he's, uh, we, he's a, a partner, uh, we work together, um, and uh, with the... Uh, we, We place a great deal of importance on the script. So Miguel Ángel does did make some small contributions, um, but for example, in Historia de Siempre and, Corredor, and El Corredor, the script was really um, quite an important uh, piece of work, and uh, we worked together very well with my scriptwriter and Miguel Ángel. And the scriptwriter was really keen on getting 
a good script on paper and he has a particular talent for getting a very good dialogue in quite a, a sort of brutal way he, he can capture that. Um, so yeah, we, we did make the odd change here and there, but in, essentially we respected what was actually in the script. Sure. Um, for Historia de Siempre, I thought it was essential to have a very powerful voice telling the story. And I looked at some, I looked to get uh, peop, uh, artists who were used to work in dubbing. And um, Miguel Angel was actually my second choice, but we, we won't mention that, we won't talk anymore about who the first choice was. Um, but I'm really pleased that he has gone on to do some really great things and some uh, film work uh, since, since that film he did with me. Para, para que os hagáis una idea, o sea, con Miguel Ángel eh, trabajábamos nosotros en la historia de siempre, mmm, rodeábamos, no sé si conocéis un poco Barcelona, el, el Paseo Icaria, ¿vale? que es como una rambla más pequeña que la rambla, que está en la zona sur, la zona baja, perdona, de Barcelona. Entonces, rodeábamos con el autobús constantemente esa plaza, ¿vale? tirando hacia el interior siempre. Entonces, Miguel Ángel, eh, tenía, eh, teníamos estipulado con él varias marcas en guión. Y os puedo asegurar que él hacía una toma y hacía otra y el texto no variaba, en absoluto. ¿eh? O sea, es una bestia. Una, o sea, trabajar con un actor de doblaje precisamente lo que te da eh, muchas de las cosas positivas que te da, ¿no? Pero entre ellas yo destaco esta, ¿no? O sea, el poder fiarte absolutamente de, del texto, ¿no? Con, con, en su caso era brutal, porque además eh, teníamos que rodarlo en dos días, eh, en movimiento, mucha biodramina ahí había y, y bueno... Eh, el, el tema de poder te fiar del texto con él era, era pues, eh, yo diría que necesario, ¿no? Igual otra persona no sé si lo hubiera podido hacer igual de bien, ¿no? Um, with Miguel Ángel, in this shoot we had to go around a particular district of Barcelona in, uh, in the and the area we went round was a square, a plaza, and we went round and round on a bus, and he had particular aspects of the script that he had to keep uh, repeating, and um, he, in every take, he said it exactly the same. He was with, you know, he, he managed to stick to it exactly, and this was quite challenging because the, the uh, we filmed it over two days. We were moving around as we were filming it, and so it left me very impressed that he was able to do it. And I don't know that of many other um, actors who would be able to do such a good and a precise job. Yes, yeah, so you didn't imply for a second that Miguel Angel was writing the script. But I, my question was: you answered it already. If, if you need a, an act, if you need an actor like Miguel Angel to be able to write a script and a dialogue like this one. And I agree with you, it's amazing how it comes across. Uh, <clears throat> I, told, I know you have a couple of questions, so I don't know how you want to organize this. I can throw another one. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Es, es la cuerda, o cuerda. Eh, Cuerdas. Eh, Cuerdas. In plural. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 in English, it's, it was called pray. Uh, no, in uh, the, American, the American version is pray. Eh, presa, ¿no? Sería. Pero eh, the, the, the English version, because the, the film, um, I think that uh, the, the distribution in, in UK and, and in Ireland uh, is going by uh, a smart doc distribution yes. and, and the, 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 the title is Robes. The English right, uh, title is Robes. Then we have the, the Russian title is... Uh, es, es curioso ver cómo, cómo ha ido cambiando en todos los países. The Russian title, I think it's uh, Rabia, <laughs> Angry, ¿no? ¿Sería? And, and in Taiwan is uh, oh, Alma or something like that. So it's... Ay, they, they look at different points. Of the... <laughs> this, yeah, this yeah, yeah. It's, sí, sí. it's quite a funny coincidence, ¿no? Smart dog. Distribution. Este, yeah, smart dog, <laughs> smart dog distribution. Yeah, I think we, 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 we had a, a smart dog, a smart dog in the film, a very smart <laughs> dog because uh, we, without the spiona that was was the the, the, the dog, uh, it was impossible to to do the, the things that that happens at the film. Okay. And how did it go? I, I know it, it released in Spain and it had a surprisingly big release for an independent uh, film. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I believe it was in February or something like that, like soon before the quarantine. And uh, did you, we, all, we are asking all the directors how the quarantine came 
in the timeline no, the, of work. Some of them have been very affected, some others uh, not not so much. And did, did the quarantine affect your film? Did it cut it short? Or? Absol absolutely, absolutely, because uh, we was at the second uh, week on wow. on on the air, <laughs> and and it was terrible uh, because. Uh, Para nosotros hubiera sido perfecto alargarlo más semanas. Eh, yo recuerdo que, que antes de la cuarentena, una semana, dos semanas antes, yo estaba viajando por toda España haciendo eh, bueno, los típicos bolos ¿no? de presentación de la película en, en Valencia, en Madrid y tal. Bueno, igual he sido una bomba de relojería sin saberlo, porque ya sabéis cómo iba esto. Pero, pero bueno, eh, a partir de ahí... Eh, estrenamos, eh, empezamos, pues bueno, el fin de semana ya que empezó a hablarse del coronavirus y el tema de las salas y tal, sí que es verdad que hubo, hubo, hubo taquilla ese primer fin de semana, eh, se estrenaba El Hombre Invisible, eh, que bueno, se lo llevó casi todo, pero bueno, nosotros al ser pequeños pues confiábamos en, en alargarlo un poco más, la, la cuestión está que se, se cerró todo todo el tema, ¿no? Y, y bueno, y ahora pues la suerte que hemos tenido es que la película se ha vendido muy, muy, muy bien en medio mundo, ¿no? Y ahora, de hecho, esta semana se pasa en el mercado de Cannes eh, y los países la están, la están devorando. Y, y, y bueno, y sobre todo en el mercado de Oriente, en Estados Unidos, en Francia, en Rusia, o sea, imaginaos, ¿no? O sea, es, está siendo un, un, un boom a nivel de ventas, al menos. Eh, pero me sabe mal, porque aquí en España pues, me hubiera gustado que, que, que lo hubiera visto más gente. Confío en que ahora, cuando salgan plataformas, pues, pues pueda, pueda verla pues, el público español pues, bastante más. ¿no? So is that what? I sorry, sorry, Fiona. <coughs> um, yes, uh, the uh, virus did uh, affect it. Um, I would have liked to have had a longer run in in cinemas, and that wasn't possible. Um, just before the quarantine happened, I was traveling all over Spain, um, in Valencia, Madrid, doing promotions, and um, and the, we did started as as the coronavirus kicked in. Obviously, the cinemas closed. Uh, some films were still showing, but these were like mainly big kind of blockbusters, and it's much harder for smaller films. Um, but um, it has actually been selling really well all over the world. Um, after Cannes, it's, it, we've also been selling well in the Far East, in the Russian market, in the US. It's unfortunate that it, um, I would have liked it to have been shown more in Spain, but hopefully as it's released onto different platforms, um, more people will get to see it in Spain. Is, is that what's left? The, 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 there's, there's no, I mean, nobody probably can answer this question, but once the cinemas, well, the cinemas are, have reopened in Spain now, or are reopening as we speak, uh, and it, there's no there's no answer to this, but how can you get a film back? For example, we were talking about Las Letras de Jordi, uh, and th that was one of the films that was going to be released the day the quarantine started. Um, and it's now been uh, scheduled to be launched again. Do you have the option to, to really go back? Yes, you have you have the option, but but you need a, a, a campaign of marketing and a campaign uh, of distribution that that uh, we we haven't money to do right now. So it's difficult because you can return to the to the to the exhibition, but. Uh, without guarantees of, of, of if the people uh, who know that your movie is on the on the cinema, so uh, it's it's complicated. It's complicated. Um, we prefer right now uh, be at the platforms uh, because um, I think that 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 is the natural way of the movie because uh, it was at cinemas. Uh, Unfortunately, with the, with the coronavirus, but but um, right now, uh, six no four four months ago no <laughs> was the 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 release. Um, right now, I think that 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 it's the time of of, of platforms with our movie at least. Uh, it will be great uh, be at cinemas again, <laughs> but uh, we 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 are we, we have confirmed some several festivals um, here in Spain like uh, Roda de Vara Festival or 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 Bilbao, uh, fan of Bilbao, yeah. uh, where where the movie will be at at official selection. So um, 
for us is 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 a a, a good no, good good news no for for the for the movie no. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about cuerdas, obviously ropes. Uh, your last film, which has a lot of limitations. Uh, in a way, it's a story of a confinement. It's a story that happens, you know, with with several limitations. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that you're trying to stay away from stories about confinement. But I don't know if these 13, 14, 15 weeks and what's been happening to our bodies, to our minds, has been affected the, the stories you're planning to tell or the way you're planning to tell them. No, uh, bueno, a ver, eh, esta la voy a responder, te la voy a responder en castellano mejor. Eh, mira, yo que, que con cuerdas, eh, evidentemente nosotros, eh, la realidad supera la ficción, o sea, no podíamos prever que, que se liaría la que se está liando, ¿no? En absoluto. Eh, es una historia que viene trabajándose desde hace tres años atrás, ¿vale? Empezamos el guión y nosotros queríamos, y, a, mi obsesión son los supervivientes, o sea, yo creo que uno de mis libros favoritos es El Lazarillo de Tormes, o sea, os podéis imaginar que a partir de ahí, y, y aparte que, que considero que es algo muy, muy, muy de Spanish culture, ¿no? O sea, es, es que es así, o sea, aquí, para para, para lo bueno y para lo malo, buscar supervivientes. Es como así. Eh, entonces va, va arraigado a nosotros completamente. Entonces, para mí es un, un caldo de cultivo espectacular para crear unos personajes, unas historias eh, que bueno, pueden pasar de, de, de lo más espeluznante a, a lo más tierno. ¿no? Entonces, yo creo que, 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 que es lo que, me, lo que más me interesa. ¿no? En el caso de Cuerdas, eh, queríamos trabajar con una, con una protagonista femenina, porque yo era la primera vez que que dirigiría pues, a, una, a Paula del Río, ¿no? en este caso, eh, a una actriz, eh, además que, que estuviera tan presente en la película y que, y que nos fuera guiando a lo largo de toda la historia, y en una situación límite. Esta vez sí que quería llevarlo a una situación mmm, físicamente, y nunca mejor dicho, ¿no? eh, mucho más límite que, que en el caso de los cortometrajes. También por el hecho de, de trabajar el género, ¿no? o sea, para mí era una apuesta, pues, pues, bueno, de mucho respeto, porque yo lo que había hecho hasta ese momento eran ramas con tintes de acción, alguna película eh, con algún, algún tinte de, 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 de humor negro, como Matagatos, ¿no? con algo de acción, pero bueno, muy básica. ¿no? Entonces, en el caso de Cuerdas me enfrentaba, pues imaginaos, ¿no? a, a mi gran Everest eh, y aparte a rodar eh, con todo lo que Hitchcock ¿no? nos decía que no había que hacer, ¿no? con animales, con niños, con... Bueno, eh, me marqué ahí un, un, un monzón, ¿no? Eh, lo, lo, que, lo que hizo Monzón cuando, cuando hizo El Caballero, ¿no? ¿cómo se llama la película? La primera película que hizo. Eh, siempre, siempre recordaré que él siempre decía, oye, ya que vas a hacer una peli, no sabes si habrás, habrás otra más, lánzate con todo lo que puedas y venga. Y entonces es lo que hicimos. Y, y bueno, teníamos el dinero muy justo, evidentemente, porque hacer una ópera prima es un, es un acto titánico, yo creo que hoy en día aquí en España, y a pesar de venir pues, con el currículum que veníamos, nos las vimos y nos las deseamos para, para levantarla. Eh, imaginaos, esta película se rodó en tres semanas y cuatro días, cuerdas, es una burrada, en dos idiomas, en valenciano y en castellano. Eh, o sea, que eso quiere decir que lo rodábamos eh, también en el otro idioma y, y eso es una bestialidad, una bestialidad. Todo esto se puede hablar ahora. En su día no lo hablas porque dices, bueno, que el público sea soberano y, y que el público decida si, si le ha gustado o no la experiencia, ¿no? Pero ahora sí, ahora sí. yo lo digo. Oye, eh, ahora que ya está todo, todo el pescado vendido, ¿no? Al menos aquí en España, ¿no? A nivel de crítica, a nivel que, por cierto, yo estoy muy contento con, con la recepción que ha tenido la película y sobre todo en Sitges, pues, espectacular, espectacular. Y, y ahora sí que lo decimos, ¿no? Oye, pues mira, esto se rodó, vamos, dejándonos piel y media. O sea, fue una, una, una auténtica burrada. Yo me fui pesando 84 kilos, me unido, tenía que bajar ahí, y, y me volví pesando 75. O sea, es una burrada. O sea, es, vamos, perdí, perdí todo por el camino, perdí muchas cosas, la verdad. Espero que la segunda no, no, no sea así, ¿no? Eh, pero bueno, de, de... ahí está, estamos contentos. Sí, sorry, Monty. Perdón, perdón. Fiona. Sorry, sorry. Fiona, the, the, next, the, the next question I promise uh, to answer. Answer with a word. Okay. Um, can you just repeat? You said your favorite book, and I didn't catch it, Monty. <laughs> tu libro, oh, perdón, tu libro favorito me lo puedes repetir. Azarillo de Tormes. <laughs> bueno, uno, uno de ellos, eh, uno de ellos. Okay. También um, podríamos hablar de Rinconete y Cortadillo. So with Cuerdas, um, obviously I couldn't, I didn't predict what was going to happen in terms of the situation that we now find, find ourselves in. It was actually a project that I worked on for three years. 
And uh, one of the inspirations was one of my favorite books, uh, Salida de Tormes. And really, in, I like the idea of this mix of characters ranging from the truly awful people, truly awful characters to very tender and loving characters. I was particularly interested in the, in the woman and having a woman um, as the um, important character and a big presence in the film and exploring this idea of being in a situation with where there were severe physical limitations. Um, and I want I wanted to really get into more play around with this with the genre in more depth. I I touched upon things like black humor and acting before, but a little superficially and I wanted to uh, explore it more. And uh, I don't know if it was Hitchcock who said, you know, never work with animals, never work with children, but I ignored all that and I essentially just threw myself into it. Uh, and our budget was very tight and we had to did all we can to, to make that film happen. And believe it or not, we actually filmed it in a, in a period of three weeks and four days. And it was in two languages in Valencian and in uh, Castilian Spanish as well. So it was just a completely tough experience. Uh, at the time, obviously, I didn't uh, mention all this, all these aspects about how tough it was. I just left it up to the public for them to decide how much they liked the film. But obviously, now that that's in the past, I can talk quite openly about this. And it was great to have a, a, a brilliant reception for this film, particularly in Stitches. Um, the, the filming was so tough that at the beginning of filming, I weighed 80 kilos and I actually lost five kilos. Uh, that's that's how uh, that's the, the kind of struggle that I had filming. I, that. Films, <laughs> I gained them in that quarantine. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, 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 Fiona. No, and, and obviously, me, me your too, first feature. Well, to start in, in, in film, I'll better take it here. You know, we should. <laughs> Uh, um, your first film and to start with, you know, official competition in Sitges is an ideal, and particularly if you're doing a genre, no? Uh, type of film, you jump in it. It was my, my first film and, and in a new gen for, gen, genre for me, so it's, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. And you were saying uh, that you kind of moved from more uh, action or even social realism to genre when you post this to, to Arturo, to the producer, He's, mm -hmm. he's fine with that. He says, Monty, where are you going? How you work on that? How was the, the step of writing stories, uh, you know, to a different, I don't know if to say different audience, but just w with different tools? Yeah. Um, we, we, we move up at the beginning again. Uh, I like the, 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 the survivor stories. So um, for me, the, the genre is a, a, a tool uh, to explain a survivor uh, story. So, uh, in fact, for me, the the, the, the most important is is, is the, the character and the character um, of Paula del Rio, uh, Elena, uh, and and then the tools are in in, in, in second in second position. But uh, I I know that uh, for for do a, a a thriller or a or a or a horror movie, uh, you need. Uh, uh, watch a lot of of, of horror and, and thriller movies. Uh, I'm in love with with this kind of genre. Uh, in in one of you, you can see. Up, 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 up. Frozen. <laughs> we lost Monty. <laughs> the, the <laughs> back. Back. You like horror. You like horror so much that yeah. make us feel the, the thrill for a second. Exactly. Here. This, this is the, the the tool, the tool of the thriller. So, por dónde iba? Ah, sí. Vale. Okay. So, uh, uh, in my life, I, I have seen a lot of of, of, of films. Uh, because I'm uh, about uh, thriller, thriller films and, and horror films, so uh, it's it's my my school. So I'm in love with with the CGS Film Festival, for example. I uh, usually go to 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 to, to, to watch the, the 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 new propositions of of this kind of of genre uh, films, uh, international. So, um, but but for me, it was a was a a, a real deal. 
a real deal and 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 so uh, we decided to 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 make a, a good pre-production of the film uh, with uh, a lot of uh, work before the the, the, the shooting movements um, a lot of work with the with the dog because uh, we like it um, uh, a dog, a real dog for the movie. We we don't don't want it a, a CGI. Uh, o, y, y, no sé si lo digo bien. Eh? Efectos especiales con el perro. Mm -hmm. Queríamos algo real. Uh, so it, it was the 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 way. But um, después de, de, de todo lo que lo que lo que ha ido ocurriendo con la película, eh, sí que sí que aprendes un poco a a, bueno, a, a decidir un poco eh, qué es lo más importante ¿no? de, todo, de todo el proceso, no tiene nada que ver con, con, el, con un cortometraje. ¿no? Yo, yo soy mucho, o era mucho, de enfrentarme a las cosas dando un 200%, un 300%, pero claro, eso lo puedes aguantar una semana. Eh, cuando estás más de una semana, eh, aquello te hace aguas por todos sitios. ¿no? Entonces, aprender a eh, distribuir tus energías ¿no? en una película, yo creo que es lo principal que he aprendido. ¿no? Eh, saber hacer las apuestas seguras, saber qué peleas puedes ganar y cuáles no merece la pena ni luchar. Y dejo que Fiona traduzca esta última parte. Sí, creo que con el film tuve que aprender, fui capaz de aprender a decidir qué es importante. My um, approach in, a, in short films was always to give it my all, you know, 200, 300%. But doing that is something that you can't keep up over a long period of time. So with a feature film, um, I learned to uh, distribute my energy a, a bit better and to make a judgment about what, what battles are worth fighting for and what things are just not worth, not worth even, even fighting for. And, and I have to say that the... the the major part of the battles uh, we we won so uh, <laughs> me doy con un canto en los dientes <laughs> <laughs> Ahora Fiona, um, I, I love yeah, w w when David Pantaleón a couple of weeks ago was saying arrimar cebolleta and then uh, someone comes and says, me doy con un canto I, en los dientes. Sí, maybe maybe I, I went with a spring in my step, maybe something like that. I left with a spring yeah, in my step. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Monte, yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm cautious about time uh, and we could spend hours, but now that cinemas, particularly in Spain, are reopening, I don't know if you could tell us um, a particular cinema you miss or experience of going to a cinema, that you miss a cinema in a festival um, uh, that, that, that you remember in particular. Uh, during, with, with ropes, with cuerdas or...? In general, in your life, yeah. a cinema that you wow. would love to go. I, I I love to go to to the cinemas that open my mind uh, creative in a creative way, uh, uh, and and it was in Tarragona. In Tarragona, we we had uh, several several cinemas that that now are disappeared. Uh, the Oscars is is called one of them. Uh, Catalunya II <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in Tarragona and and. and there, 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 there were uh, all, all cinemas with uh, some, some of them with um, uh, wood, wood, wood chair. You know, it's, it's the, 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 the mythical comfort. chair of yeah, yeah. uncomfortable <laughs> completely. But, but, um, but they, they have uh, some kind of of, of, mag of magician, no? Or, and and I have. Uh, Good, good, good remembers uh, of, mm -hmm. of good of, memories. Of, of, yeah, good memories of watching films like I don't know Batman, for example, of Tim Burton, or mm -hmm. uh, I don't know Transporting, uh, this mm -hmm. kind of, of, of films. I'm gonna tell you one that I'm dying to be back next year, or, or, or somehow there is uh, Sal Cocteau in Clermont Ferrand, and I think uh, you were there as yeah, well with, yeah. with, with, to with the runner, no? 2000 people no uh, i think in in, in, yeah. the, in the in the in the cinema it was amazing uh, mm -hmm. yeah, incredible it's it's uh, uh, it's, so it's a it's a it's a it's a, 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 a communist uh, <laughs> a communist no? style yeah a it's almost like a style, no? eastern, uh, eastern style yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you 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 were uh, presenting the, the the film for for all of these people and 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 
it was it was amazing it was amazing I, I recuerdo haber hecho una panorámica una foto panorámica de todo el público la tengo por ahí es es, es absolutamente brutal brutal yo nunca había estado en una sala tan grande desde luego incluso con estas even with these new lenses that kind of give you like a pana uh, no. it's challenging I remember we were trying to do the same to do a shot of the whole cinema and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a challenging one yeah yeah, yeah. Almondi, do you mind if I ask you about uh, lesser lesser evil? Oh yeah, yeah. Lesser evil is a is a new project uh, that I I I would pray to 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 shoot. Uh, I, I'm not the director. The director is Manuel Carvalho. Uh, I don't know if if, if you know him about mm -hmm. films like uh, Retornados, Return, the, the Return. No, I think that it was the, the, the English title, and La Posición de, de, de Emily, Emily Evans. Creo que fue la otra película que hizo él. Bueno, es eh, tiene tiene tres o cuatro películas de género, and and I think that that it will be shooted um, in at the end of this year, if the virus uh, is going on well. So uh, I am the, the, the script writer uh, with Jacques Blesa, and it's a it's a thriller movie, and it's a it's a kind of uh, you you remember the film uh, with uh, Mickey Rourke and and Robert De Niro that uh, it's called El Corazón del Ángel. Wow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, in, it's in this way. So it's a it's a it's una pasada de, de guion. Uh, and we are waiting for the for the for the shoot, but but uh, in in this case uh, as a scriptwriter, mm -hmm. ba balancing uh, writing for others, directing a new feature, maybe planning a new short film. What are your other projects now? Uh, I, I am with with a project with uh, of, of a new film with Corti Confección with Oriol Maimó. It's mm -hmm. uh, the, the the Leticia Sabat uh, Leticia Sabatero. Oh, Dios mío, Leticia <laughs> Leticia Doleras film. Uh, well, it's, it's a serie uh, de la vida la vida perfecta oh, and, oh, and, oh. and 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 it's a, <laughs> yeah, me, me mata. Bueno. Um, Uh, I have one one film with 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 this producer, and and we have another another film that uh, we are de developed uh, right now, and we are we are uh, waiting several uh, reunions with with producers that 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 could could uh, uh, start the, the the project. So uh, a lot of projects. Uh, uh, the, uh, aparte, uh, we we have a a, 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 a serial a serial. With Minoria Absoluta, it's a, uh, another pro pro production company here in, in Barcelona. Is that a, 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 you meant a mini series? Uh, uh, no, mini, mini series, no. Uh, this is a, well, sí, but, uh, I think uh, ten, ten chapters. So, but, but it's, 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 a kind, it's a kind of, of Black Mirror. But but in a Spanish way because uh, it is based on, uh, a little in in my shuffle. So for me it's perfect because each each uh, chapter is is like one el corredor or one uh, la historia de siempre. And uh, in duration in duration uh, terms uh, also is 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 practically the, the same. 20 minutes a little more. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's always, it feels really short because sometimes we, every Sunday we try to, uh, we say 30 minutes with each, but it's always too short and we like to keep flexible, but, uh, we're going to have to, before, we're gonna, before you say bye bye, I have another question. Ah. Go ahead, Ralph. I have, I have time, I have time. Alberto always is like a, it's like my shadow, like my mental shadow and I'm his mental shadow. <laughs> Oh, I was going to ask you, for example, for me, one great discovery and one of actually a few I made uh, during the quarantine because I had the time to watch things and read things and that, Alberto made it to me. It was this Pietro Marcello, this uh, uh, Italian director. Uh, I have wow, love to it. And I was going to ask you, for, uh, uh, have you had the time for that during the, the quarantine, during the lockdown? To, to, to go and discover new cinema? Is there anyone you want to recommend us? Uh, well, uff. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, 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 el otro día, mira, te la voy a responder en castellano que creo que va a fluir más la respuesta. El otro día hablaba con, con Yaques, con mi otro co-guionista, y, y los dos coincidíamos que ahora hemos empezado la cuarentena viendo muchísimo cine. Hemos devorado las plataformas como todo el mundo, ¿vale? 
Y a mitad de cuarentena hemos empezado a ver clásicos. Yo he empezado con Tarkovsky otra vez. Eh, bueno, el otro día, por ejemplo, estaba viendo 12 hombres sin piedad eh, y, y era como, ¿por qué? Yo creo que, que, que el hecho de devorar todo lo que hemos devorado, ¿no? es como si nos hubiéramos metido en un, en un McDonald's, esa sensación que tengo, ¿no? con mucha hambre, y hubiéramos empezado a devorar Big Macs. ¿no? Y de repente dices, ostras, tío, es que, ¿sabes qué? Es que me apetece un buen cocido ¿eh? ahora mismo. Y entonces nos hemos puesto, nos hemos puesto a, a, a ver clásicos. No sé, y me gustaría que no fuera así, ¿no? Que, que me da la sensación de que últimamente hacemos un poco el cine por patrón. ¿Vale? Y, y yo creo que es, 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 un poco, es un poco peligroso. Me voy a lanzar aquí, que nadie me escucha, va a decirlo, pero yo creo que, que esas historias que, que contienen riesgo y que, y que ostras, que sorprenden por, por, no por su originalidad, porque todo está inventado, pero sí a lo mejor por, por ciertos aspectos eh, que, que destaquen, que, que le den riesgo, y nunca mejor dicho, ¿no? a, a, tanto al rodaje como, como a la historia que estás tratando. Eh, y que polemicen, por qué no decirlo, o porque, o porque bueno, trasciendan un poco más ¿no? de cara al espectador. Y, y eso últimamente no me lo estoy encontrando tanto, me lo estoy encontrando en algunas propuestas más indies. Eh, estoy viendo, por ejemplo, mucho cine de, de, de la nueva ola de terror ¿no? indie, que, que está muy bien. Véase Hereditary, véase Minds of Mar, o sea, son, son, son pelis que yo creo que, que, que hay que verlas, ¿no? O sea, por, por su propuesta, ¿no? Luego te podrá gustar más o menos, pero por su propuesta yo creo que vale la pena verlas. Pero sí que tengo esa sensación de, de que estoy disfrutando más de los clásicos que estoy volviendo a ver que, que de muchas películas de, 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 ese, de ese fast food que, 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 que entras a devorar pues, de una manera brutal, ¿no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fiona, do a comment first, Rafa. Yes, I was actually just chatting to Jackis um, recently, my uh, one, uh, someone I work with, and we were just uh, talking about how much we watched at the start of quarantine. Um, you know, we were probably like everybody else, just uh, taking in everything. And then gradually, as, as the weeks wore on, we um, I've personally gone back to to Uh, watching the classics, um, such as Tchaikovsky. Um, and I, it, I think of it a bit like McDonald's. You know, if you walk in and you're hungry and you start eating everything that's there, after a while, you start to crave a really nicely cooked meal. Um, I think that um, sometimes now the cinema is is a bit um, a bit safe and that uh, We're not, there's not an awful lot of risk taking um, and it doesn't have to be about the originality of the story being told, but it could be a risk in the way that it's shot or you know, other factors of the film. Um, maybe it's saying something that shouldn't be said or we're not used to hearing. And I, unfortunately, I, I haven't seen a lot of that in, in films. Um, I think sometimes I've seen it in some indie films and particularly in the horror indie films like those of Eddie Tarry. Um, but uh, and I think they're worth seeing. But I think that's why I've really gone back to the classics. I think you really, yeah, you know, can't beat yeah. them. Like so, cleaning your gaze, oh. no? Solamente like por Yeah. <risa> Solamente quería apuntar una cosa respecto a esto. Eh, bueno, dos cosas, de hecho. Eh, os he dicho Tarkovsky, pero os podía haber dicho Bud Spencer y Terence Hill. Eh. O sea, quiero decir que hay mucho, hay mucho clásico para mí. Eh, pero lo que sí que quería deciros es, es un miedo respe al respecto de lo que estáis comentando que yo, al menos personalmente, tengo. Que supongo que es un miedo que, 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 que pueden tener, por ejemplo, los pintores, ¿no? Eh, eh, el miedo a que, a que el arte pues, se venda a kilos, ¿no? o sea, que, que, que esto se, se, se convierta en un mercado eh, en el cual, pues... pues Va al peso. Exactamente, ¿no? Es que no, no lo quería decir de esa manera, pero es que es de esa manera. O sea, decía los pintores porque, bueno, hay cuadros que se venden por la cantidad de comedor que me ocupa, ¿no? Entonces... Ese es un miedo que yo tengo y sobre todo eh, al ver que ahora mismo el, el gran embudo de todos los proyectos son las plataformas, ¿no? donde todo el mundo va. Eh, estamos hablando de que Netflix evalúa cada día 30 proyectos en España. O sea, es una barbaridad, una barbaridad eso. Eh, entonces, bueno, llegan muchísimos proyectos y, y entonces, pues bueno, existe una serie de, de mecanismos para decidir si esto funciona, si esto no funciona, o cuánto tienes de esto o cuánto tienes de otro. Entonces, me da, me da mucho miedo el hecho de que, de que eso se convierta, pues, pues eso, ¿no? una cultura kilos que, que sería un, un auténtico peligro. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Raf, Raf. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mentioned uh, the, the problem is mine, eh? The problem is mine, Raf. Oh, no, we, we do it every weekend. We jump on Fiona before she translates. Yeah. Uh, in terms of classics, there are really a whole host I could have mentioned there, but I just touched on one. And really, the, the, I have this fear, and it might be a fear that uh, artists like painters might have, that you start to measure the value of your work quite crudely, almost like a, um, you know, by the kilo almost, that sort of crude market measure. Uh, and I've mentioned painters having this fear, but I also have that fear. Be and nowadays, platforms are, ha are you know very important for films. Here in Spain, for example, they say that Netflix has 30 projects, evaluates 30 projects every day, and obviously that is part of that. Then feeds into a decision-making process to whittle down the ones that go ahead and those which don't. And depending on what. Uh, how that decision making process goes i'm i'm it does make me afraid that our culture is becoming uh, measured in quite a a crude way okay. yeah and 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 again uh, we will we will prefer to be you know uh, with our screen in between and maybe with a whiskey in hand but i really like the uh, monty to share ah uh, you you do the scottish scottish one and i'm here with uh, you know Assigned uh, to your land. <laughs> I know, um, I know the estrella. <laughs> but I, I really like Monty when when you mentioned earlier the, the connection with Lazarillo de Tormes because uh, we think that you are one, one of the genuine storytellers that we have and and we enjoy every film you do and we hope that without cameras and with a whiskey in hand we can see you in the near future maybe here in person in a pub, uh, but. In the meantime, it's been a pleasure to share uh, this vermouth with you. The pleasure is mine. We haven't almost not talked about the runner. <laughs> when, 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 when you want, when you want, friends, uh, I, I will be here. It was un, un granito de arena, no? It was one that we've been uh, after uh, to have a we chat with you, Monty, for for a while. So really, really big pleasure to to share Thank a little you. moment. Of Thank this you, Sunday. guys. Because uh, for me it's special because uh, I know that uh, from cinematic, I siempre ha habido mucho cariño to my to my projects and, and my short films, and and I hope with with my my long films, my my futures, my new futures. So and, and short films because I'm working still working in short films. Yes. Ever, you, you ever and, and, and ever will, will I, I I will be working on, on short films because. Uh, it's it's my cuna, so <laughs> and and thank you, thank you for all. Thank you for joining us. Uh, have you. a lovely Sunday. And thank you, Fiona. I'm sorry about my English, my no. terrible English. No, no, your your English is very good. So nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Gracias, Monty. Gracias. Adiós. 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 Okay. Oh, e... So nice. Yeah. Th thanks, Fiona. Yeah. I think okay. Nacho's gonna go ahead uh, in uh, English. It's okay. Been a, it's been a, a, long, a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> You've been with us 13 weeks. Yes. It's been... I don't know who did your set. Having to be with Alberto and me, but uh -huh. it's great. thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Bye for now. Okay. See you later. And when we have a, a, another guest coming today, our last guest of this Quarantena Short Film Festival, uh, Cinematic Bermuds. But we will be back, Alberto, we'll be back with the Bermuds, we will be back. Well, we have a breather, and we can organize it, and we, and we find somebody who wants to speak with us. <laughs> <laughs> but that being, uh, I'm going to let uh, Nacho Vigalondo come in, and if you want to introduce him, that would be great. Yep, uh, it's not uh, an, uh, it's not a new kid for anyone here. Uh, the prestigious, uh, one of the most prestigious probably film websites, following on the work of Roger Ebert, uh, said something like: over the course of eighteen years, four features and several short films, Nacho Vigalondo has proven that you can still make modestly scale high concept science fiction films. Obviously, he is one of the most well known Spanish director in this in this land. In the UK, screenwriter and director, uh, shot to fame 
with his shorts, one of our all-time favorites, 7.35 uh, in the morning, nominated to the Oscars, to the European Film Awards, following up with Los Cronocrimenes, the time crimes that, you know, he has like a second youth and he's been considered one of the favorites and, and most acclaimed uh, cult genre films uh, of its time. Uh, uh, the contribution to Nacho Vigalondo is, is amazing. We reclaim also the contribution to, to, to other arts from his Instagram stories, Twitter channel, uh, to contemporary dance with his shows in, with Joe Crepusculo. So it's a big pleasure to, to, to welcome Nacho Vigalondo to, to close uh, Cinematic Quarantena and Cinematic Vermouth. Welcome, Nacho. Hi, thank you. What if, what if the show is just me hearing you praising me like you did, and I'm just having this stupid smile. I'm just saying <laughs> really beautiful things. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, these guys again doing the classic presentation. I, I, I just hope you can understand our, our Vallecan accent, but otherwise, good. <laughs> Yeah, I was dreaming with saying something, I think in English is, is, it sounds better than in Spanish, that is Cabezón de la Sal Born, no? It's, it's... Cabezón de la Sal Born, uh, you can call it, um, once I remember that uh, when I, when I, my, my English teacher, when I was going to secondary, um, to high school, uh, and she told us that the proper translation of Cabezón de la Sal into English, it would be Salty Main Head. <laughs> that that's, sounds kind of sexy, like, like a big head that is salty. It's like, okay, okay. It sounds like somewhere in between Canada and the US rather than in Cantabria, no? Yeah, that, that, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Welcome, Nacho. How are you? Where are you? In Madrid? Where are you? I'm Madrid. I've been. I've been. Uh, I'm. I'm virtually under lockdown yet. I mean, lockdown is over somehow, but uh, I am. I am still at home because uh, I had a lot of um, a lot of work to do, and my work is uh, consists on me staying at home while writing. Um, so uh, I'm a good. I'm a really good citizen at this point. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, I, would... <laughs> I, will, I, will, I was going to start, no further ado. We, we're going to talk the voucher here today, Nacho, as usual. Uh, we're going to be touching many things in the fringe, you not know, going into the depth of, of nothing, but uh, it's a, a way... That's, that's uh, the internet. You're, you're describing the internet. So always... <laughs> Being in the surface. We're going to be in the surface in a lot of topics. But I would like to start Nacho Vigalondo, filmmaker, director, dancer. Uh, could we consider uh, Nacho Vigalondo a, a moral referent, uh, un referente moral para una generación entera, for a whole generation? Who considers me that? Who? Could, could, could we consider you a moral reference? Oh, if, if you could consider me a moral reference. No, yes. Not at all. I mean, I mean I, I, and, uh, and it would be scary for me to impose or suggest that. That is something that I wouldn't recommend to you or anybody on earth, but, uh, um, but if you do you, I mean, <laughs> what can I tell you? I'm, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, to be a moral referent, uh, you have to be uh, observed uh, in, um, uh, through your everyday, the way, the way you behave to other people. I mean, the way you behave with uh, people serving you at the grocery store and mm -hmm. you don't know how I behave with those guys. You don't know which kind of person am I. So uh, let's keep the mystery open. Uh, what, what, what if I'm an asshole? We, we don't know that. I mean, you don't well, know that. Maybe I'm, I'm, in this conversation, I am the only one that truly knows that I am a true asshole. Yeah. So we, be careful we, with your, we, your we, we create... We created the idea of uh, Nacho Vigalondo that is a, a moral referent for a whole generation or a small cult of I weirdos don't internationally. I don't, I don't know. Uh, not, not just a film reference, but, but a moral reference. My, <laughs> yes, my whole, yes, yes, yes. My, my whole ethic standpoint and my whole behavior with other people can be a reference for the truth. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, it's, 
it's that, that idea is not coming from me. I just want to make be clear of that. <laughs> we wanted the reaction to that idea. I want to make clear that that idea is, is not coming from me at all. So I don't know. <laughs> Nacho, I mean, in these crazy days, we are living the internet being as it is, the media being as it is, the polarization of our political life being as it is. We wanted to have a go of media manipulation. We wanted to pervert the reality and, and, and pass wrong information. So I'm going to show you a few images and you tell me what you think about them. I've been, I've been these days. And then they ask, what? What? <laughs> what? Alberto, what did you bring here? That is, that is fake news. That is fake it, news. It's, it's fake news uh, and it's the result of a random choice, no? I don't know okay. the... What you're doing now with those frames, with those stills, is not a moral reference. It shouldn't be a moral reference. It's the, yeah. it's the antithesis of that. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, you're cheating your audience with right. those frames. <laughs> um, could could I mean, we say... But should I, should I answer the question or maybe the question was a trap? In which I fall into, and then you show the uh, the box uh, still from my Instagram stories. No, no, we, we, we wouldn't really get as far as implying for a second that you are a, a box sympathizer or but you, don't, you don't know what I vote, even if, even if you were, <laughs> you, you still don't know uh, what the, the, the true kind of person that I am. So, and even if you were, I, I, you have every right to, to keep it secret. Yes, and we respect that. Okay, okay, <laughs> I know the secret. Instead of answering questions, I'm just like confirming that I have a lot of secrets. This is a weird interview in which instead of uh, providing information to the audience, I'm just showing the audience that there's a lot of stuff that I will never confess. <laughs> the anti, the anti uh, interview. <laughs> the best interview, yeah. Well, but I'm gonna ask you another question. And this is a, about the, the short film we showed this, this week as part of our last uh, program, uh, Domingo, Sunday in English. Uh, and where do you, obviously you have a, a, a huge list of, of amazing films that will touch on the uh, horror genre or the psycholo psychological um, thriller. Uh, and th this one somehow is, is a bit of a, a joke about those two genres. The same elements that belong there, but they are treated by a couple that is almost having a domestic, and yeah. and, and eventually they miss the, the, the big part. It, you, I, what is your positioning? What, what is the reason of this? You want to have a relax from? I, I, I simply have a lot of fun while playing with a, with a recognizable genre, like something that we have seen many many times in films. And, uh, but changing the point of view, just, just that. I mean, instead of uh, focusing on the hero in a traditional film, I, I have a lot of fun while trying to capture the small, the small experiences of the small people. And when I say small people, I include myself in the equation. I mean, I feel that if, um, if I'm part of the, uh, of the cast of a multimillionaire alien invasion film, me as a character will be the everyday man, just like looking up and pointing with a finger. That that would be me. I don't. Uh, and that's that's uh, that's the kind of approach I play in all my films. I think. Uh, but, uh, but I say that this is just me making fun. Sorry, this is me having fun. Because at the end of the day, instead of being like um, a lecture on anything, uh, the way the way I need to work is by having fun. I don't. Uh, I don't feel that. I don't feel that I have a big statement to say, which is not implying that the movies have not a big statement, but the, the, the movies themselves, movies themselves have are more clever and more interesting than filmmakers. Um, there's a chance that everything I do is better than me. Uh, so if the big statement is there, it's not because of me trying to put it there, like like forcing it. It's just because when you make a movie and you're having fun while doing it, there's some level of truthness into it. There's uh, enough <laughs> level of truth. And uh, when something is true, uh, the time speaks through the film. 
I don't know. If this is um, this is. It, 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 it is natural and I agree. And, and in a way, it has right from the beginning. When you think on uh, a lesson about cinema, no, and the bad bola, there is a mm. pedagogical element that is not like imposing a theory of cinema, but rather throwing a question, as you were saying, changing the, changing a bit the paradigm, and, and throwing question and is present through the through, through the through your films until the the very end. That element of you know, I'm gonna leave this here. You can, you can, an using ideas, you can you can find a lot of ways to to cheat on the audience um, and doing a scam when you don't have money to shoot something bigger. So through through jokes and through <laughs> false theories, you can make something look interesting, even if you're not showing anything at all that has any kind of interest. <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's a scam. It's a scam. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's um, using putting uh, a lot of tricks in the bowl. So people think that you're, you're an interesting man when making film. Nacho, you've been touching mainly, or it seems like the, the thin lines uh, on, on, on comedy, genre, uh, that you could argue are the two genres uh, evolving more or faster or changing more in, in cinema. I don't know uh, if, if, if you agree with that, but it seems like comedy and, 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 and genre has been Evolving faster or in a different way. But when you say genre, what do you mean exactly? Because what, what I feel is that not 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 just genre, but in, in a more specific way, I'm thinking of horror. Horror, yeah. I feel like both horror and comedy are the uh, the specific genres that are forced to evolve in a different speed than the others. Because what makes you laugh now uh, is not going to be funny tomorrow. And the same with horror. I mean, you have to improve the themes, you have to improve the tools, you have you have to improve the, the, the tricks, you have to improve the devices uh, all the time uh, because horror movies and comedies get old in a really cruel way. Normally, I mean, the masterpieces are still fresh, of course. I mean, uh, but uh, for example. I'm using, uh, this is an example that I love to use. I mean, Halloween, the John Carpenter film. Uh, I, I, I heard, I'm sorry, I read so many complaints of people on, on Twitter uh, about people laughing at uh, the movie when they show it in, uh, I don't know, in uh, retros John Carpenter retrospective in, in films. And I mean, young people tend to laugh at Halloween because for them it's not scary anymore. Um, and that's interesting. Why a movie that was so fucking uh, fright frightening when, when it came out? Why that movie is not making um, young audiences to be scared the same way? Uh, but I maintain that the movie is still a masterpiece, even if you are not screaming all the time. This is still a masterpiece because of the language that is used in, and because the level of abstraction in all the uh, elements that are played in front of you. Uh, the time, it's, yeah, it's really interesting. Time affects in a, yeah, time affects in a different way some of those. I feel uh, that, for example, if you are making a drama, and if we consider drama as a non-genre, uh, you can play the same beats through the time. You can you can make you can you can make to you can shoot a love triangle tomorrow, and that movie can be can feel contemporary. But if you shoot a slasher film uh, or, um, uh, or, or uh, I don't know, a horny comedy like Porky's, <laughs> that yeah, movie that, is going to feel really old. And that's interesting. That's how it, how the, 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 those films don't, haven't aged properly. And I don't, it's interesting what you're saying. But no, okay. not, not, just the, not, not just the bad, when I say, I made a mistake. When I say horror comedy, of course, that, that kind of films are, have gotten really old. But even, even the good films uh, get old in a different way. Yes. Yeah, there's some of them, we recently saw the, the, the return of The Exorcist. And, and that one obviously has very little comedy in it or none. But it's, it's still as scary as I remember it on the original day. I I love The Exorcist, and I and I feel I feel this huge envy for William Friedkin. Is that it? That film because what I truly love about the about The Exorcist, The Exorcist, sorry, is that 
up until the uh, straight horror elements in the in the plot, the movie feels like a cold drama, a cold documentary. The movie is not forcing himself to look like a horror film from from the very beginning. The movie is cold, like the only way uh, the only way they did in the the way they did in the seventies. The really movie is really cold. It's really sober. Is uh, you can feel the distance between all the characters, and I I love that. And I'm 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 afraid that if you make a horror movie right now these days, what makes me sad is that the movie has to feel like a horror movie from the first frame, like through the music and through the photography and through uh, jump scares from the very prologue. I'm kind of sad of that because if I feel that today a movie has to look like it itself from the very beginning. And I really love when movies are free to play with different tones and to play with with expectations in a in a beautiful way. Mm-hmm. We're talking, of course. Yeah, no, of course, Nacho, and 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 that connects with basically we're living. Uh, there was a small film this week in in the last program called Bendito Machine that was playing with this relationship between man and technology. Uh-huh. It's a small a small animation, but. Um, it go, it, it, it's just it's the day of algorithm, no? And if 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 you can capture the attention of a mass audience uh, with yeah. a style that you recognize very easily in the film, a cut, a photography, camera movement, uh, it's kind of you miss it, you go to the next thing. So you know you don't know if the algorithm is 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 demanding a new style, but yeah. how you feel about that? I, I haven't seen the, the the film you're talking about. No, but about this dependency or the algorithm demanding a new style or new type of films. And I'm aware that speaking about the algorithm is like speaking of the markets. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer you with an example. Uh, one of my favorite films in the last five years, let's say 10 years, uh, is, the, is one of my favorite filmmakers alive is... Panos Cosmatos, the guy who made uh, the uh, the spectacular Beyond the Black Rainbow, and later the uh, Mandy. the brilliant Mandy, uh, which is really famous for having Nicolas Cage as, as the main star. And I love, I truly love how that movie in the first half looked like an art house romantic film with a with some let's say sci-fi satanic elements in the background. And the movie is like feeling you like you went to an art house film festival. And right in the middle, it becomes a grindhouse uh, film, like from art house to grindhouse. And it's, it's done in a way that these two parts of the film, instead of alienating each other, instead of contradicting each other, uh, it feels like everything flows, everything respects all the elements of the movie respects the other. And at the end, every, everything makes sense. But it, it, in this contradictory way. And mm-hmm. that's, and I love as an audience to feel that I'm guided through a labyrinth instead of, uh, I'm talking tonally. Uh, I, I, love, I love how the movie is having this confidence in me as the audience in order to take me there and take me to that mm-hmm. other place. And, and so and so. It's something that you are used to experiencing, for example, in Japanese films. If you love genre Japanese films, you are going to be used to feel like you are inside a hurricane. Um, but uh, in Western filmmaking, this is more, more difficult to find that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a br- brilliant example, uh, naturally. And, and it's true. And I don't know if it's a, 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 an exception, the rule, no, the exception that confirms the rule. Um, if you know all this new era of streamers uh, putting more money, you know production boom, more cinema made. Uh, if that goes hand in hand with more variety, how you feel about more diverse uh, I filmmaking? Don't know. I, I hope some days I wake up and I feel optimistic, and sometimes I wake up and I feel that everything is going to hell. Uh, uh, I don't know how I feel um, regarding this thing because. It feels like the the whole worldwide production of films and series is controlled by less and less companies. Like uh, you, you, uh, you are. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're aware of this this controversy about uh, going with the wind. 
uh, taken out of a catalog. Yes, and the riff of and an it's like, wow, these days, if you take something out of a catalog, that, that movie can virtually disappear because, okay, physical media is always there, and of course, piracy is always there, but I feel insecure. Um, I, um, I'm okay with, with, with them putting like signs at the beginning of a film in order to explain the context in which the movie was made. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. I'm, I, I, it's not a problem for me. But taking things out of a catalog feels like taking something out of existence these days. <laughs> Uh, so I can, I'm kind of missing those days in which uh, there were so many companies uh, putting films on different screens. But uh, this is me being old at this point. Well, maybe, maybe I don't know, the, the, this, this kind of pandemic has brought the internet. I, I used to laugh about this and say the bad guys were prepared, the more commercial side of the, our industry, whereas the more independent side uh, have been ignoring um, online channels for so long and mm. now they realize I mean, the cinematic has to jump in the swimming pool and learn to swim uh, and, and do it. So we, we may see more uh, smaller channels. Now you don't need to have mm -hmm. the power of Disney Plus or Netflix or yeah. names. Sorry. I, I, I like I, the idea of, of be a small being the new normal. I love that idea. Yes. That would be interesting. Um, in channel. Can I? I, I? I don't know. At the end of the day, it's not about it's not about budget. It's about what you mentioned before. It's about diversity. Yes. We, um, it would be great, for example, if in, uh, for example, the uh, some of the markets are suddenly open to the kind of films that we were used to when we were younger, like horror horror B movies or I don't know uh, kind of stuff that is more difficult to produce these days it would be great if small means more diverse these days uh, in both uh, political terms and and the, and just aesthetic terms it would be great if uh, movies are more different to each other yeah. uh, so I feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like I'm talking like a pessimist but on the other wow. hand you the, uh, quality, the, 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 the technical quality of of films and series these days are is is, is, is astonishing. I'm not talking about the uh, VFX or the uh, I don't know the most superficial stuff. I'm talking about the language. I mean, the average TV series these days uh, has a language that is way much better than what we saw in the 80s or in the 90s. Like a normal series is really well made compared to the ways, the ways things were made before. So, uh, um, for example, I've been I've been watching the uh, The Outsider, the uh, Richard Price adaptation of Stephen King for HBO, mm -hmm. and it's like I was blown out. This is like, this is what uh, a Stephen King reader has been expecting to see uh, all his life on screen, like. Uh, Stephen King treated as an adult uh, source for horror stories, and and this phenomenon is, is making me really optimistic sometimes about the kind of stuff that we're going to consume in the future. Yes, well, uh, Nacho, I heard you in another interview speaking about this worry of yours, of yours that uh, that we need more people to, with different points of views, with different views and different ways to see making films to don't lose by variety. And, and that connects very well with a, an idea of a, a question I wanted to ask you, if, if that comes down to education. I mean, traditionally in schools, kids get to learn or to, to wake up the same side using pencils or using brushes because that was the the affordable option, whereas uh, making cinema up until a few years ago was completely out of the budget of... Yeah, of yeah, yeah. But that's, that's not the case anymore. You can make a film with your mobile and there is a good camera, there's uh, editing, there's... Uh, it, it, do you think that maybe is the, the option to, to have a creative art shown, uh, taught in schools through cinema? I on one hand, 
I feel like the older generations, I mean, us, we have nothing to say to the young people. Like, like when I see a truly brilliant TikTok video or a truly brilliant Instagram story, I feel that I have nothing to teach to these guys. They are like, they have their own language. They have their own format. They have their, their own length and they, hold, they, they have their own tools. Well, who am I to, to, to tell them that it's better if they make short films or feature films? I don't know. Maybe 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 uh, uh, the uh, emotional uh, the emotional dependence that we have with uh, theaters and uh, feature films and the old school formats is just that an emotional dependency. Uh, so on one hand, I feel that just leave them alone. On the other hand. Uh, I would love to preach on younger people about classic film, classic films. I'm sometimes I get really angry at even people at my age, like considering uh, that uh, classic films are the Spielberg stuff from the early eighties, and that I feel that that's insulting. And I will, I would love to. Um, to, 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 to tell young people that if you watch classic films, you're going to have a lot of fun. I'm talking from, from silent films. So uh, if you want to read literature from the uh, 14th century, there's a big chance that a lot of people are going to get bored because of the barrier, the language barrier. But I truly feel that uh, if uh, people... So let's say um, more now Nosferatu uh, in big numbers. Like if a lot of people watch the film, I, I feel the truth is that most people are going to find that movie amazing. I see. Should we, should we... Really modern and really uh, like really really evocative and interesting. I, I don't I don't want to I want to feel that I want to tell that having a big appreciation for classic films is not turning you an elitist because those movies are damn, damn fun. And they uh, speak to us in many ways. And one of those is how can we, what can we learn from the language, the visual language through those days, mm -hmm. uh, from those days? How, how can we improve our perception of how you should something if you, um, are aware of how movies were done in the silent era or in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I feel that um, that we shouldn't lose that. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm concerned because most of modern platforms, they completely forget about classic films. Yes. We have Filmin, which you, uh, which you probably know, Filmin, the uh, Spanish site, mm -hmm. um, that has an amazing catalog, but it's just one example. Uh, I feel it should be a common thing for big flat platforms to have uh, enough space for classic films. Mm -hmm. And it's two interesting avenues there, which one is audiences and the other one is following on film education that Rafa was saying. And, and it's true, you cannot impose kind of, you know, or say, hey, yeah. these TikTok videos or this style of, of video uh, is, is the right one. But I'm, 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 I'm quite, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm quite concerned on, on the issue of film education uh, because it's not about imposing, but then there is a risk of just leaving it to the forces of, again, the algorithm, the market, the capital, whatever yeah. it is. But mm -hmm. small interventions, and particularly from your role, maybe, I don't know if it's regularly teaching at a camp or at least mentoring uh, in La Incubadora, uh, about how that role may maybe of, of mentor, how, how you... How you have, personally take that role of mentor when you teach oh, in film? In the, in the, 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 my mentoring experience these days uh, is a different thing because I'm mentoring another guy into yeah, you know? yeah. into making a into like making a more refined version of a script. This is what we're doing these days. So it's not it's not I, I don't feel like a teacher. Mm -hmm. I feel like a, a guy who is reading a script from a friend, and I just making notes out of it. So it's just that. Uh, 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 Yayo, who's the, who's the director I'm working with, uh, is going to get my next script once I finish it. I should finish it this day, by the way. Uh, I'm going to give him a, a copy of the draft and I'm going to hear the same from him. So it's not, it's not teaching, it's not teaching or preaching. We are, we are colleagues. Yeah, yeah, at, and it's, at the same. 
But I had I had experience uh, working with uh, like teaching for real. Uh, like small like never I never made a, like a long a long course. But I I've been I had a lot of experience and I have a lot of great time. And I, for example, I love uh, to talk to young people about things I made. Um, talking about the way I came to some ideas and the way. I succeeded sometimes, and the way I failed other times. Uh, speaking about both, that is that is interesting. And I had I had this uh, this TV show on TCM uh, called Bigalondo Mind and Madness, in which uh, working I'm working with uh, Noel Ceballos, a writer, and we do what we like the most, which is like talking about people most people haven't heard of, and that is another way of. That is another way of, of imposing your tests to to the world. That's great because naturally you have managed to answer one question I I ask you and another one that I was about to ask you, and it's, it's something I, I've been wondering with different people for the last few months. Is that what, what's the point of making new films? I mean, there's no, no no one in this planet has enough time in a lifetime to watch everything that is good there to watch. Oh, I'm, okay. This is a new phenomena. This is a new phenomena. This this didn't happen before. Uh, I remember that back in the let's say back in the nineties or the two thousands. Uh, like, if we heard about a TV series of a film that was amazing, we we were running behind it. We were chasing it because quality was something that some sometimes it popped here or there. Uh, it was it was like. Um, it was like an isolated phenomena. Like that movie is really awesome. Uh, that series is spectacular. Now we are experiencing this kind of bubble of quality. And uh, it's not it's not that the offer is really broad or maybe too broad. It's more than that. Uh, that offer is like let's say seventy percent excellent these days. And this is the this age is the first time in my life in which I say some I watch something, it's awesome, and I pass because I know there's another or something coming later. Uh, and it's weird. It's, it's, it's something that is taking me a lot of um, thinking. Yeah. Nacho, something that is is very obvious when we talk here, you know, in in this sort of chat, or when you see. Uh, uh, midnight madness, or probably you know, it's just a, a genuine passion for sharing films or the love for films. Uh, yeah. So w whether that is inside a school or mentoring or in a TV program, I, I celebrate. A, uh, how do you say that? A curator. That's being a curator. I, like okay. I, okay. I, I, I cura this, curator. Love it. We, we we talk a lot about curation here, and there is a fine curation. Let's say. And there is a very passionate curation. There is a you know a very fine way to present uh, a program of films that you prepare. And then there is someone who is almost doing audiovisual activism. That is just sharing with mm -hmm. this passion that, that you have. Yeah. And we celebrate it, whether it's in to a mass audience in TCM or a small group of students. Uh, and and we, we are tired of, of angry cinephiles. We are tired of that. Those have been there forever. Like people who have this knowledge and uh, all this data, and they have a really refined and exquisite taste. And therefore, they are angry at everybody else because uh, the rest of the people are, are having a really bad taste and they watch bullshit instead of their real fine quality um, uh, artistic expression. And I, and I hate that, I hate that. The only way your knowledge is uh, useful for society is when you have a big smile and share it with other people. I mean, the other, there's no, it makes no sense to uh, complain on people watching superhero stuff uh, and just mm -hmm. that. Uh, the, the only way you can, you can, uh, you cannot change that. There's no way to change that, but you, you, can, you can just simply share your enthusiasm about other stuff. To people, so maybe yeah. they can they can complete the experience uh, watching yeah. different different films from different countries from different times. Just that if, if you don't share enthusiastically uh, your tastes, you are yeah. just one of those guys with.
we don't want to hear about. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm talking about love. If you love something, you want to sh you want to express that love and you want to share it. Exactly. It's the Nacho, we don't... Who take, is, is the way with people who take cocaine, cocaine addicts, like they are really insistent on you taking cocaine with them. And they cannot stop talking about cocaine. And they cannot stop talking about you having to take... You need to try this, yeah. You yeah, need to so try it, no? We have to, we, we have to treat films as the best cocaine. Co cocaine, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nacho, I'm sorry. We, don't have a, we don't have a lot of money, but we're saving. And we, have a lot, and we have a lot of whiskey. So we hope in the near future to make an offer you can refuse and bring you here. I Give, I give you a lot of whiskey. Alberto, what is the connection between cocaine and whiskey? It felt like... Let, let me finish the point. Uh, a, 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 a little bit of money, a lot of whiskey, and you spend a week here just maybe sharing films, you know, here with us in Scotland. Uh, we're saving. I'm just going to leave that it there. We're saving. Awesome. I love Edinburgh. I love, I love, I love Scotland, I, I swear. Uh, I have uh, two experiences in Scotland. In, in Glasgow and Edinburgh, and I, and I have a really amazing memory of those times. So, and you seem to be nice guys. So I'm, I'm, I will say yes. And um, believe us, no. yes. there's a lot of people. Here. You don't but know. I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned that I mentioned cocaine, and you instantly talk about the money you have and the whiskey you can add. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was not, it, it's love for films. The, the, the was threat there was the, was the love for films. We no, want I, you. We want you to come here to share your love for films. Yes, that, no. That's that's no, mani no. mani manipulation. There's many many authors that they, they, they used to say self-taught authors. They, they, they used to say my education is reading one uh, one book a week, uh, going to watch two films a day. And I don't want to say names, but there's many that have carried on that 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 uh, self-education along the history of of cinema. And, and one thing that worries me. Touching on the education, touching on the amount of good films that are there, is how to get people to know. I, I, I have lots of friends that feel intimidated because they think I am a sort of a intellectual of, of, of cinema, which I'm not, and I don't I, I, I try to be. But, but there's, the, there's an expression you hear all the time. They're ashamed of admitting they're watching some series on, on, on Netflix, for example. I, I would love to be able to point them in the direction of a good history of the cinema or a good way to see cinema. Or, a, you know what I mean? Other than spending the time I have spent actually uh, watching cinema and learning and to appreciate it, uh, uh, what is the way to, 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 to bring back from the dark side people to the clear or, or vice versa? To watch um, Midnight Madness. <laughs> no, to yeah, appreciate no, um, uh... <laughs> Um, I I'm a gamer. I play games. Uh, I, I, I don't like games lesser than films. And I'm, I'm I, of course I include video games. And you can see that I love board games. And I love I deeply love games at how they work and, and how the mechanics work, how the themes work. How can you how can you uh, how can you suggest a theme through mechanics while playing something? And when I say this, uh, I don't feel obscure or I don't feel too intellectual because they are games, right? Uh, no one is considering you um, like uh, a difficult to understand intellectual guy when you're like expressing your love towards, I don't know, games. But to me, films are the same and they are objects made to for enjoyment. They are... I mean, I mean, I mean the, the the most obscure filmmaker wants you to enjoy the film. The most like dark absurdist artist making films wants you to have a lot of fun with it. Maybe not fun. Fun is a, is a is a word that sometimes feels limiting, but they want you to enjoy. Maybe joy is, is the word that we're looking for. Because if you mention fun, it feels like it has to be either a comic or a comedy, uh, a comedy or people running after other people, like crazy chases and fights and stuff. It's not about fun. It's about joy. I mean, it's one of the movies made in the history of humankind. 
were made with the, with the intention of being enjoyable. Yeah. And that's the first step. I mean, the same with games. Uh, all the games made ever, all the games ever made were made to to have to make you feel some level of enjoyment. Nobody questioned that. So why with movies it feels different? Uh, and he, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, it's yeah, no, but... that I'm repeating the same stuff again and again, which is something that I do a lot of time. I'm sorry. No, from, from a scientific point of view, it's almost like constantly testing. And we here, Nacho, just to put you into context, from September to June, we program once a month. We do like retrospectives or selections. We take them to Glasgow or Filmhouse or Dundee. But once a month, we always have a short film night. No, short films is our thing. We, we have a particular passion. And it's a constant test and error. No, it's, When we were talking about curation, sometimes the word curation has had some negative effects about a, a fine art of making it, you know, and, and, and what we try here with this small space that we have at Cinematic is that constant test and error, share films and, and yeah. see, see how putting this short film that is a, an obvious audience pleaser with this strange experimental thing, with this animation can, you know, just just keep choices and people will find their own roots and, well, and pleasure. And, and at the end of the day, we shouldn't forget that at the end of the day, uh, it's interesting how a movie works, but also how a movie fails. Uh, it's, it's always, it, it can be a really nice, beautiful discussion. Why didn't you like Citizen Kane? Probably, I, 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 I'm, I'm interested in hearing uh, the guy who thinks Citizen Kane it's a piece of shit. Um, or I don't know. I mean, uh, I, 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 I try to come up with a sacred name, like a, a sacred film, like let's say The Dark Knight, the, the Christopher Nolan film, or something everybody loves, like, uh, I don't know, even Avengers Infinity War. Uh, it's interesting to hear why that movie works from this guy, but also why that movie is a piece of shit for the other guy. And that's... That's also interesting. That's also I, an interesting debate. Uh, agree. Um, yeah. Agree. We need to disagree. I mean, Alberto has criticized me in public, in front of our audience, for taking my kids to watch Avengers: Infinity War. <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. I, 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 this, the, 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 no, I don't think anyone can fail to be entertained by the film. Maybe. It's not going to cover any intellectual need or any discovery you're anything new, but the, it's, it's, it's well made. It's well made. Maybe the movie has not an intellectual intention, but you can find a lot of intellectual ah. pleasure. Take him to war. I, I, I'm going to take him out of his <laughs> broadcast. It feels like your brain is outside your brain. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I was saying is that even if Avengers Infinity War has not an intellectual purpose or uh, uh, an intellectual premise you can find a lot of intellectual pleasure by trying to guess what this movie is telling about our times why that movie and no other is speaking to the to these times in a way no other movie does that's the interesting part you you shouldn't hey, hey. Um, because yeah, if you release today the uh, or the, the, the Spielberg classics like they did in the 80s, if you release those, those movies today, they, probably is not, they are probably not going to work the same way. E.T., if you release E.T. these days, not, not, uh, it's not uh, like, uh, not, not, not as a nostalgic procedure, not, 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 I'm thinking, I'm talking about a world that doesn't remember E.T. E.T. never existed. And E.T. comes tomorrow. Um, maybe that movie goes straight to Netflix. Let's say that, yeah. or not. But even if if it, goes, if it jumps into theaters, that movie is not going to work the same way with the audiences. Probably it's not going to be. I don't know. Maybe yes, but there's a there's a there's a big chance the movie is not going to be the the amazing success success that was in the eighties. It's truly interesting to to guess why. What has changed? And why have we changed? Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, commercial films, what we call commercial films, what we call blockbusters, are really interesting because they are speaking about us, about us these days. 
Because the, um, the, the, yeah. the scary answer should be that we haven't changed a bit. Because, I mean, they are, fo they are following the same formula the Greeks did 3,000 years ago. Oh, but it has changed a lot. Because people don't care about Greek uh, about Greek tragedies anymore. So even if it's the same structure, it's the same, same. even if even if they share the same uh, axis, the same basics, yeah, uh, everything else is completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Greeks didn't have CGI, but <laughs> but the, 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 probably the, the audience was a bit less sophisticated. You you might think that my hair though is distracted, but I can't stop. Uh, being distracted because Rafa has the monster from Bird Boy coming out of the of the poster behind. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, but it, it's it been for a, Vázquez, a yeah, film, right? it's Alberto Vázquez Bird Boy. It's absolute genius. Um, we 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 were lucky. Uh, oh. We did a we showed all like his comics, uh, oh, working yes, yeah. working progress like a, a couple of years ago, just just after Bird Boy. He was here and we were doing a, oh, a total a, retrospective to, to the guy from amazing, comics. Top and won yesterday in Annecy, a jury award uh, in Annecy Festival. So still oh, going yeah, strong. That, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. It's fantastic. Uh, it's definitely good news. Happy, yeah. happy so, for that. Nacho, uh, one question. I mean, we are asking everybody. Is that it, it, this quarantine has been new ground for everybody. The industry, in particular the cinema, which still is not perceived as a first necessity and that it but you know, and, and the, the fact that we have spent so much time indoors that we almost forget how to socialize we have to learn it is there a film or a book that that, that, that will remind you of this period something you have discovered during this period uh, i mean you are talking about a past film yeah there's something you have watched during the quarantine that will remind you of, of it forever. How to everything, socialize again? Everything was <laughs> apparently talking to this. I mean, everything that I saw, I mean, I'm talking about even even games or um, comic books and films. Everything felt that, that it was talking about these times. Because we have a, we have a fetish uh, as a society. We have a fetish with the end of the world and uh, with, um, with, uh, with uh, we actually have a fetish with isolation of uh, and trying to picture a time in which information is not flowing the same way and we don't know what the hell is going on and and we feel trapped in your in ourselves for example i saw uh the soul bus film for face the movie yeah. about the ants uh it felt like a movie made for me during these days uh that was that was uh, interesting to see and if I saw a movie that had nothing to do with the quarantine, it felt like a commentary on or everything. That <laughs> exactly. Was. You can always find the thread. about everything we have lost forever. And it, it felt like he was talking about this also. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really disturbing. Um, I, but but I, don't, I don't feel that quarantine as a theme is going to affect film production in the future. Because I feel that we are living in times in which the end of the world starts just like this from one day to the other and the world goes back to normal just like this. Mm -hmm. and, no. we, and we are like making making quarantine jokes feel already dated. Totally. And, and, and that's why we're interested in your particular opinion, Nacho, because from someone that did open windows several years ago, we want to know what's coming up in eight years, whatever you're thinking on. You know, or wh whichever type of film you're preparing. I feel that um, I have no idea because well, <laughs> I have no idea at all. I think I have a little th I have a little theory about something that is going to become a film because my generation is making films these days, and um, and. Uh, we spend a lot of time on social media and we are like the ones who are speaking about some stuff for the first time on social media. Like we are the first guys getting old on social media. Yeah. Um, we are, it's, it's, we are like an experiment. We are like the, uh, the uh, Guinea pigs of the internet. Like a Vietnam, uh, yeah. For, for all the good and all the bad. And I feel that, 
I feel that people my age, like late 30s, early 40s, are starting to be really freak out about how you perceive time in the second half of your life. And we love to talk about that. And the last week, it, it, uh, it was the 25th anniversary of the, the, the common people, the Pulp song. 25 years. And we have no idea how time works anymore. And I feel that's going to be a theme. How time is not working anymore. Uh, 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 I, have, I, I cannot believe that we are like jumping into summer. I, have, I cannot believe it. I, I, it's something that my brain is not able to understand. And this is going to be a theme for the rest of my life. I agree. Obviously, I'm from a different generation, but I agree. I had so many conversations with different people this quarantine about perception of time. How, I mean, the interesting bit will be how different people express that uh, sort of sensitivity or, 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 or conflict with perception of time and, and you know oh, yeah, yeah, being yeah. too it, fast it's, it's something probably it ha it's been happening forever but um since the beginning of time but now we have tools to express it in a different way like 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 social media is a way to express yourself when you have nothing to say uh social media is uh, is, uh, is 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 about the corners of life that are not interesting enough for, for a book or a film. And in social media, you can, you can see that we are starting to lose track of time as it is. There are so, uh, so many positive things uh, happening in social media out of this quarantine. I agree. I've, I've seen so many fantastic things. things. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. living in the age of, of, of information. And that means that we are also living in the age of misinformation. It's, going, it's, it's, it's the price we'll have to pay. Um, it's really weird. Um, yeah. Nacho, necesitamos unos nuevos pactos de Estado. Do we need uh, a new, uh, you know? Why are you, are you <laughs> changing to Spanish to say something about the politics? <laughs> What has happened? Nacho, please, do we need new pactos de Estado? Would you like to answer that question? Of course, uh, every week. A new one. <laughs> Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, new Pactos de Estado. Pa pactos de Estado. <laughs> pactos de la Moncloa. We need new Pactos de la Moncloa. I've enjoyed so much uh, hot words coming to the front during quarantine, you know? Particular words yeah. becoming very fashionable. Yeah. Um, no, uh, parenthesis aparte, um, uh, about an anecdote. I'm taking the conversation to a, a specific anecdote Uh, that I heard, and I think it's brilliant, and it'd be great if you could tell us more about that night of the anecdote. Silence. No. Um, when you really, uh, or oh, the first night, I think the, the you premiere Time Crimes in Sitges, Jordi Costa takes you to the back of a club and, 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 and tells you, the, or shows you the, the Jedi way, the, 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 the things you should do. I've heard uh, in an interview that Jordi Costa took you and told you, Nacho, Remember, don't, you know, don't, don't do this, do that. You know, you just won a big award, but don't go crazy about your career. Is that true? Uh, could you I, tell us a bit more? I didn't won any kind of award at Sitges. Not award, but it, the night the premiere, I think it was in the presentation of the book uh, on, on Un País de Risa or the Avicine book about comedy. Uh, there was an anecdote that you were saying of Jordi Costa taking you to the back of a club, to a sofa, and lecturing you, telling you, Nacho, Damn, great what you're doing. Ah, I, I the know. anecdote, is it was so good that I could almost picture oh my you two God, in the I back know, of a club. I have a really bad memory. I have a really bad memory. My, my, my I, 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 of time goes also backwards. Um, my... My 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 head was all, all already going, you know, like maybe Jordi Costa was hiding every Sitges a couch in the back of a, a sofa and, and you know trying to get uh, filmmakers through the right path, you know. Oh, no, uh, no, 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 that's not. I, I love the idea. Role. That is not Jordi Costa's role, uh, and, <laughs> and, and and he's a, he's a, he's an amazing guy to listen, but he's not the, he's not into lecturing. He. Uh, He has a really, I love the guy because he has a really 
passionate tasters. He loves and hates with a true passion and in a really entertaining way. And uh, that's, that is something that you also have to appreciate. And he's really clever and, and, and sensitive. Um, um, but you... I don't, I don't, I don't know how I, I'm trying to remember the anecdote, but I don't, I don't, I don't, you, you really don't have to, to feel the point. You, you really not, you don't have to feel the gap. Uh, but I wanted to share it because it was just, I, I kind of constructed the scene. I could visualize a club is, and you two and Jordi Costa lecturing you. And, and I, 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 I love this scene. Is that conference on YouTube or something? Is this a video yes. somehow? I think, I think it's in, in the Ocho y Medio when the presentation was done in Ocho y Medio. And, and the anecdote was so brilliant that oh, maybe it was fiction. Can you, can, you, can you give a link to me? Because I want to we'll watch do. it and suddenly go like, oh my God, of course. That was because it, <laughs> it seems like a really great anecdote that I completely forgot. <laughs> I will do, I will do, Nacho, don't worry. But if, no need to complement it uh, or fill the gap again. Uh, I just wanted to share the, the power of this scene in, in my mind. <laughs> um, Having said yeah, that, Jordi, Jordi Costa, I have to say something about Jordi Costa was a really influential <clears throat> figure uh, before I met him. Uh, it still is, <laughs> but, but I remember when I was a kid in my little town in the north of Spain, in Cantabria, Cabezón de la Sal, and I, and I knew Jordi Costa through his uh, works on the, the El País newspaper, um, magazines like Fantastic, uh, Fantastic Magazine, uh, one of the few... Uh, general magazines that came to my my town, and he's a really influential figure to me. Uh, but not in this specific way. Not not about the rules of being a good filmmaker or the rules of a nice film, but in a probably in a deeper level. Is uh, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the f f philosophy of life, philosophy applied to to the human experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, a, thanks. What I'm trying to say is that he's a spiritual figure. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and uh, I don't know if, if there is uh, specific names or someone you can think when you look at maybe the Spanish filmmakers scene, uh, Spanish directors that you are particularly excited about, you want to see their films, you think uh, you want to see them uh, in the... 2020s or in the in the years to come, uh, and you're particularly excited about what they're gonna make, not what they made already. I, I already mentioned Panos Cosmatos, the Mandy filmmaker. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Spanish guy who I know personally, and I wish he was making uh, way more films. He's called Pablo Hernando. He made Berserker. Maybe you know him already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, I, I really love the. Uh, I really love the. Uh, the sensitivity and uh, of this guy and the, uh, the delicate way he uh, mm -hmm. expresses himself. I, I really love this guy. Um, more names that come. I saw this movie recently called The Vast of Night on Amazon, which is a sci-fi film. The Vast of really Night? A small sci-fi film, really, really well directed by this guy called Andrew Patterson. And I want to see the next movie from, uh, I don't know how to say this name properly in French, but Coralie, uh, Coralie Fargue, the, 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 the woman who made uh, Revenge. I probably, you have seen Revenge probably. No. It's one no, of no. those grindhouse slash art house films about, it, the title says it all. It's a, it's a, it's a revenge. It's, it's like modern, contemporary slash feminist version of uh, one of those rape and revenge films. It's like uh, the modern version of of uh, the rape, the... all the stuff, or the last house on the left. And it's way it's way more interesting than those films. And I recommend it a lot. Revenge. Excellent. Well, I think Alberto and I are hesitating to finish this interview just because we don't want to finish speaking with you or finishing our cinematic vermouth. But all the good things come to an end, I guess. Alberto, do you have another question? 
I'm same. happy. I, 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 I have thousands. You know, um, you're talking to a guy that conquered his girlfriend uh, singing Me Huele El Pito a Canela. So, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's say something. Uh, uh, probably the the, 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 the the expression that you use, the phrase that you use in the Spanish sounds great. In the Spanish, like conquistar a tu chica sounds great, but in English, I think it sounds horrible. Sounds incredibly conquer, horrible, no? Conquer your girlfriend. Sounds, <laughs> yes. Sounds painful. Awful. <laughs> painful. My, my opinion <laughs> is that. Probably, it, it, probably, Probably it sounds awful in Spanish too, but we are used to it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, in my opinion, if she let him sing that song to her, she was already conquered. <laughs> she was already convinced. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a smart lesson on, on language review. Uh, Nacho, indeed, it sounds horrible. Conquer, yeah. Conquer um, the girl. My. <laughs> I, th I think something changed between my girlfriend and I when I sing Me huele el pito a canela. When you sing, uh, the, your smell, your, your dick smells like cinnamon. That's yeah. right. I'm, I'm, I, 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 what can I say? I, I feel that my legacy is up to something. Like, 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 <laughs> like before I die, I will feel satisfied with my, with my life if I made something work out of my song. Mm -hmm. You changed my life in a, in in short. I'm you changed my change your life. Imagine um... <laughs> Christmas card, don't they? Sorry, it was a cousin. <laughs> with that awkward silence, what has happened? <laughs> no, yes, I, I actually I had another question, and I wasn't going to ask it because yes, it's, it's getting too long. But it, I, I I look at your your work, and coming back to that. And there's an equal number of short films than feature films. And I, I actually, I must confess, I, 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 I like it all, but I like, I prefer the short films. I, I, the, the, those really get me very strong. The, the time crimes maybe is the, the, the other one on the other side. I, are you planning to do more short films? I know what you, what you say. I feel that, that make, making up, there's something that we heard so many times about short films being, uh, more difficult to do than a feature film. That's something that we heard before, right? Like uh, the, the ability you need to condense the story in 10 minutes uh, is way bigger than what you can do in a feature film. That is a total lie. I mean, like making a perfect short film is way easier than making a perfect feature film because the, the, the amount of elements that are played in, in a feature film are massive. And uh, and you can have you're making a short film. It's kind of easy to to have a full perception of what you're doing. Like um, a, per, a short film is ten pages. You you can learn those ten pages. I'm talking about the script. Of course. You can learn. Uh, you can memorize those ten pages and have that in your mind. But a, but a feature film is way bigger than you, and it's way more difficult. And I totally understand what you say. I love the the short film format, but it's kind of difficult for me to go back there because in a short film like most of the times people don't get paid it's something that you do in an early stage of your life because we are just move all of us are moved by enthusiasm and now if you want to make a short film you cannot allow yourself to make people work for free for you so suddenly it's a really expensive thing to do Unless you go gonzo and you just shoot yourself doing stupid shit. But making a traditional short film when you are not in that stage of your life uh, and, and if you don't want to pay, you want to play with people times and people's salaries, it's something kind of difficult to, to, to do. My last short films were made because of some brands that wanted to cooperate with me in some of the uh, some of the things that I made. I made this little thing called Carlota, which is the, one of the things that I like the most. Uh, I'm talking about the things I made. And Carlota is made because a beer brand wanted to pay for it. Um, and that was a really amazing experience. It's one of my favorite short films to me. Um, but it's not that easy. It's a paradoxical situation, like making something incredibly expensive is easier than making something that is just expensive and that's all when when you're younger 
and you want to do rehearsals with your actors, you can do it. You, you can call you can call your friends, your actors, and they come to your house and you you do a rehearsal for a month. But if you're working with big stars, uh, that is truly expensive. So it cannot get made. So this is a paradoxical situation. There are things that you cannot do anymore if you get bigger. Oh, yeah, it, well, it, it, if you get way bigger, if you become like a truly big mastermind in filmmaking and you are more successful than anybody else, you can you can go back to your roots and you can rehearse uh, for a month and you can make your films with your own money. Uh, you can find a week in your life in which you can stop working, you can stop doing any, any anything else yeah. to focus on a short film. That would be amazing, but it's not yeah. easy. That would be almost like Thelonious Monk in jazz, no? Despite oh, yeah. the worldwide fame, he came to live under the bridge again, where he started. He, he, he went he did back twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't invite you to go under the bridge. Come to Scotland. <laughs> Have some I will go. I will go. Just pay the whiskey and the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave it you can take like you can take this language out of context and ruin my life. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay well, it's, it's a pleasure speaking with you, meeting you thank online. You. And thank you very much for your time, for your questions, for your cinema and and for, for, for Alberto's relationship. It's, it's the best I can talk about him. Laura is an amazing girl. I don't know how oh my God. Are Alberto, you married? Are you married or just uh... No, the, the, the churches are closed because the pandemic. Otherwise, oh, yeah, yeah, I can yeah, marry yeah, you. I can, I can marry you. I, I get a license to marry you. I offer Nacho, to... Something that is more embarrassing than all the things that I've been doing already in this chat is that we bump into you one day when we were in Madrid, and I didn't have the guts to tell you, Nacho, I like you or I like your stuff, and you know, I'm with her because of my well, Pito Canela. So <laughs> I think to the I pool. think that you have already forgot that you were in that week. Okay, then sorry. Let's not go back there. No? <laughs> okay, I'll show you my my, my blonde Melena. And, and let's leave it there with the commitment, the compromise of Nacho Vigalondo to, to be the master of ceremony in Las Vegas. Okay. okay. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll arrange something. <laughs> Nacho, sure. gracias. Gracias por compartir un ratito de tu domingo. Un placer, chicos. Hasta la próxima. Nos vemos. Adiós. Venga. Ay. Pues uh, no hablar con esto. Alberto nos había que tenía secretos. <laughs> secretos. <laughs> I didn't know about your secrets, and, and now we all know the. You know, I, I've been worried the whole Bermuda about the, 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 the such a small number of people watching it one person, two people. And I just realized that I'm getting the information from YouTube, not from Facebook, which the numbers are a lot greater. Thank goodness. So, listen, that's this it. is the end, my <laughs> only friend. The this end. Is here. And don't talk about more pitos in anis or anything like that, mate. Let's, let's do the thanks, because obviously we've been the kind of the, the ugly or strange faces doing this, but the whole project has been happening because in the pack, Anna uh, coordinating everything, uh, Davide helping with programming, Laia uh, with all the graphics, visuals, uh, social media, uh, Anna uh, with that public okay. institutional role, uh, so the brilliant cinematic Alberto, team there. Most of the programming and Rafaelito, most of the broadcasting technical thing. Mm -hmm. So listen, it's been a pleasure. I hope you watch it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you don't think we are completely stupid <laughs> talking. <laughs> <laughs> and not worth watching, the, not, not worth your time. There's so many better things to watch. Probably there are plenty. I put it in the list, and you maybe, maybe, one day maybe you can have a laugh with your friends. With that said, Alberto, unless you want to say something else, now um, we did in this format. We will keep doing it online or in physical format when we can. But don't stop uh, sharing the love for films 
uh, as, as we do. Uh, thanks for uh, sharing this journey, this 13-week uh, journey with us. Thanks to Instituto Cervantes, to Film Hub Scotland, to uh, Spain, uh, to the Spanish Embassy, and to Awards for All for allowing us you know, to do these sessions, the extended materials, and to do it properly. And with that said, thank you very much. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Whoa.